Test, test, test. We're good. All right, good morning. We're going to call the regularly scheduled planning commission for July 13th to order. If you would, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Ms. Slidar, are there any announcements, changes to the agenda? Good morning. Good morning. Advertising public hearing presentation open request item number two, PDR 0564 CGR2, Hillwood Expansion Revised General Development Plan with Rezone. There is a revised stipulations, revised motion, and title, no included all owners, and is attached to the agenda memo. Item number three, PDR 2205 CP Linger Lodge Road Rezone and Preliminary Site Plan, and there is a public comment and revised preliminary site plan attached to the agenda memo. And this case is going to be moved to presentation schedule. I'm sorry, which one? Item number three. Three, okay. The Linger Lodge. Thank you very much. All right. Ms. Shank, is there anything from the county attorney's office? Thank you very much. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to um, 
citizen comments and this is an opportunity to speak on items that are not on today's agenda should you wish to make a comment on an item that is on the agenda you'll have an opportunity when that application is being heard so with that clarification is there anybody who wishes to come forward and make a statement on uh, again anything that is not on today's agenda again if it's on today's agenda um, you'll have an opportunity but uh, if you would Please come forward, state your name, your county of residence, and you'll have three minutes. Uh, yes, good morning. Name is Mark Vandery, live in Manatee County. And uh, I do speak on behalf of the Waterline Road Preservation Group. Uh, is this related to an application that's being heard today? No, this not yet. Uh, I'll do that later. Okay. Uh, right now, just in general terms, I've, I've heard uh, some of the Planning Commission members, and, and specifically yourself, Mr. Connolly, referring to the purpose of the Planning Commission to minimize or avoid having lawsuits against the county and the Board of County Commissioners. Mm -hmm. And I would like for, on your future agenda, to revisit that purpose because I think your job, I think your purpose is to do planning for the county of Manatee. Uh, and specifically, I think that we are uh, behind the eight ball on planning. You're, you're not planning, you're reacting. The staff is overwhelmed with the number of cases that they're being handled. They're not able to do a proper job. You've set them up. They're good people. There's a good organization. You've set them up to fail, okay? And that's wrong, that's wrong. And, and one way to uh, remedy this is to just slow things down a bit. The timing is not right for a lot of the uh, rezoning that's taking place. Uh, not just a matter of compatibility, but the timing is not right. And the timing is not right because the staff is completely overwhelmed. They are not planning, they are reacting. They're checking off boxes. They're not doing a thorough job of planning. You have the county attorneys to take care of lawsuits against the county commissioners and the BOCC and the county in general, which is a, a very important thing to do. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. Our taxpayer money needs to be put to the best use it possibly can instead of being spent frivolously on uh, defending against, uh, in some many cases, frivolous lawsuits from different sources, including a lot of the developers who seem to have a free reign of things. So that's my request for future agenda items is to please revisit your purpose, focus on planning. I think that would go a long way to help out the citizens of this county. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there about anybody else who wishes to come forward and make a comment regarding items that are not on today's agenda? Okay, seeing no one come forward, we're going to close the public comment portion of the hearing. And I, um, I overlooked an item on the agenda, which is the um, minutes for June 8th, 2023. For the commissioners, have you had an opportunity to review these minutes? If so, um, any clarifications, changes, or the chair will consider a motion. Move to approve minutes. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Smock. Is there a second? Uh, if you would please use the, uh, uh, the app. Okay, we have a second by Mr. Turner. If you would go ahead and, and please um, please vote. All right. All right, with that, we have a um, motion passed uh, with a, a four to zero with Mr. DeLesline, Mr. Roth and Ms. Keba absent, so four to, four to zero, thank you. All right, going on to the next item, which is a presentation upon request, I believe. Sorry, I've had it on the wrong page. So um, the uh, next item is actually quasi-judicial, so let's go ahead and swear everybody in. If you would, please rise to be sworn in if you intend to speak on any of the applications being heard today. Mm -hmm. 
and um, as is typical, if it's an item that's a presentation upon request, typically the presumption is that it's uh, perfunctory and um, we'll open it up with a brief explanation and then we'll go to public comment to see if there are any specific items that need to be addressed. So um, with that in mind, Ms. Slider, can you please introduce item number one into the record? Item number one, Z2307, O'Reilly Auto Park Parish, William K. and Catherine L. March, owners, and it's a quasi-judicial case. A rezone of more or less 1.61 acres, generally located 300 feet southeast of US 301 North, on the north side of Fort Hammer Road, and commonly known as 5851 Bella Road Parish, Manatee County, from Agricultural Suburban A1 to Neighborhood Commercial Median, MCM, and the case manager is Ms. Ke Mr. Kevin Oldman. Very good, thank you. Uh, for the commissioners, have there been any ex parte communications regarding this application? No, sir. Okay, seeing none disclosed. Uh, who's the applicant? Uh, who's, who do we have for the applicant? I'm sorry. Good morning. If you could just briefly introduce your application, then we'll open it up for public comments if there are any specific uh, items we wish to delve a little deeper into. Good morning. I'm Lori Viola from Stantec, and we're representing the future owners of the property at 5851 Bella Road, and it's a straight rezone from Agriculture A1 to Neighborhood Commercial Medium. And you've been sworn? Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so with that, it's a, a straight rezone. So um, I'll open it up to public comment. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to come forward and speak on this application? Please come forward. All right. Good morning. If you could state your name that you've been sworn in uh, your, your county of residence, please. Yes, uh, Kara Byers. I'm a resident of Parish, and yes, I've been sworn in. Thank you very much. I have two requests. Um, one is I literally live there on Bella Road, and this development will be out my front door. Um, I'm not a, against, I'm not here to go against the development. I just have, a re, like I said, two requests on this. Uh, the property will be on the west side of Bella Road. I will be on the east side of Bella Road. And so I would like to request that there be some oak trees uh, on the back side of that property. So not just myself, but the other uh, neighbors that are on this road, that we're not looking at a concrete building and that we can have the trees. Um, also, the trees, as we know, also uh, gets a cooling. Um, as the sun comes down, the trees will also help to cool that little area. Um, more importantly, the second request is uh, speed bumps on our road. Uh, we already have uh, cars that are coming down our road. Again, I'm not against the cars taking that little side road on Bella Road, uh, but they're doing more than just taking the side road. They're speeding down that side road. And we have quite a few families that have some very small children. And so I, for fun, sometimes I go out there and start counting the cars that drive by. So I, that would be my second request as this is happening, uh, whether it's one, possibly two, however you want to develop that. But if I can ask again for the speed bumps, just to keep the car slowed down for security and safety. Thank you. Very good. And um, just for clarification, this is a straight rezone. So um, it's not even a requirement that they disclose the use. The applicant has disclosed the use on this one, but they'll be required to, to provide um, buffers, landscape buffers. So we'll, we'll get some information on that. Related to the speed bumps, that's a public right of way. And you might want to speak to um, uh, the county staff related to that. Okay. Um, that's something that can't be tied to this project. So um, that would be a, a consideration separate and apart from this application. So um, Mr. Uh, transportation person in the back, wave your hand. <laughs> so that would be the person you speak with. So OK, do you right. know his name? <laughs> I, uh, Did you announce your but, name? Uh, it's, it's, it's a hyphenated name. I'm not sure. It's which. Prony for staff. Okay, Prony. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry, Prony. I didn't know uh, which part of the hyphenated name is your last name. So. All right. Anybody else uh, wishing to come forward and speak to this application? 
Okay, seeing no one else come forward, we're going to close the public comment of this application. And, and for the applicant, can we please um, get some clarification regarding the, um, the um, compliance with the landscape buffers? Uh, sure. As we move into the future land use um, site plan review stage, we will absolutely, you know, comply to all the land development codes, landscape buffers, and the access um, requirements. Uh, offhand, I, I'm not. I don't want to put you on the spot, but offhand, do you know that if trees are included in the landscape buffer, if if that's part of the code, they would be yes. Yes, ma'am. So, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Can I ask you a question, sure. Senator? Yes, Mr. Mr. Routledge. Can I ask you a question, please? Let's just say, for example, that the code doesn't require a particular oak tree, a certain sizing, and so forth. With the request of a, a resident, if they brought that forward to you, would you find that consistent with general development of this particular product that you imagine there? But you wouldn't be opposed to it. Right. And would you also uh, be supportive of something that uh, metered the traffic uh, speed and volumes in some way if that were something you could support? Would you be supportive of, of having reasonable kind of controls if it were asked of you? I appreciate that. I'm sure we'll remember that you were going to try and do a helpful thing. Thanks. All right. All right. Um, any other questions for the applicant? Um, let the record show Mr. Roth uh, stepped into the hearing. So, um, Any other uh, questions for the applicant? OK, seeing none, we're going to close. Uh, let me ask the applicant, is there a desire to make a closing statement or a rebuttal? OK, applicant is waving no. Uh, staff closing comments? Mr. Chair, I just want to make sure we, we ask Mr. Roth to disclose and ask for communications before we vote. Then, poor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Roth, before we um, can go any further in the hearing, have you had any ex parte communications regarding the? Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, with that, um, the uh, applicant has another opportunity to um, provide closing comments or make a rebuttal. Can, can I make one comment about staff submission? Uh, first of all, I, I have total confidence in staff, and the first uh, public statement was uh, they're overworked. I, I suspect that's in every municipality. So we appreciate your hard work. And also, I, I feel confident uh, in our staff that when they hear from the community that people have these concerns, I know it registers and I know they watch it as it goes through. They only have the limit of the law. 
but I do think they're very sensitive to that, and I think they do work with uh, our good developers and, and engineers in the area to do the best they can within certain guidelines. And so uh, with uh, Mr. Oman working on it, I feel comfortable that you'll get the, uh, a strong review of what's good for everybody in the area. So thanks. All right, very good. Uh, again, staff closing comments. All right, uh, uh, staff waves off the uh, opportunity. And if we could, please make any comments uh, at, the, at the dais. Uh, applicant rebuttal or closing comments? Very good. All right, thank you. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. If, if uh, we could, please uh, uh, provide some comment, discussion, deliberation, or the chair will consider a motion. Uh, I, I just like to say that I think when we see uh, quality people that we see all the time in engineering and we know we have good staff support, I think the community's uh, well served within the guidelines that they're able to. And so uh, I'm going to recommend uh, approval. Okay. All right. We have a, a motion by Mr. Smock, a second by Mr. Turner, and Mr. Roth can't vote because he's not logged in. So if I could get some help. <laughs> so um, you to missed the verbal vote. Yeah. All right. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to call the matter to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Chair votes aye. Motion passes 5 0 with, uh, again, with uh, Ms. Uh, Keba and Mr. Delezline, uh, not present. Mr. Chair, can I T check the mic at the podium? Yeah. Because it doesn't appear to be working. Right. I, well, I'm hearing it's not. people how to talk into it, because it's not working. Is this button? Uh, oh, that's the panic button. We want okay, to. There, there's a switch and a button. I thought I might have bumped the button. I thought that was I'll the just shut off. Yeah. So, so um, can we get some assistance on the, the podium mic? Oh, I'm sorry. Motion passes. <laughs> that two people didn't work. Yeah. All right. Sorry, we uh. Speak into it, see. Are Are you hearing it, uh, Madam Clerk? No. No. All right. Um. Thought I bumped the button here or something. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to have a five-minute break for technical difficulties. So we're going to convene. We'll, we'll reconvene at, say, uh, 925. So. Test one, two, test.
part of the reason why I wanted an Arab there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I mean, look, there's the hair right there. You're not, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think we're I think we're good to go. Waiting for a thumbs up. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and reconvene. Uh, apparently, we've got the microphone issue resolved, and um, we're gonna have to start all over. So, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> so, um, with that, we go to item number two, and I have a a uh, conflict of interest on that, so I'm gonna have to step away from the dais and turn over the the gavel. And the chairmanship to Mr. Rutledge. So, Mr. Rutledge. And Mr. Chair, just for clarification, after we get through disclosure and party communication, we need to have a full presentation. I don't know why it's upon presentation by request. The number of issues staff needs to go over and the applicant needs to speak. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So, uh, first uh, request has anybody had ex parte communications in regards to this particular item? No. No, no sir. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, uh, could you read us into the record, please? Item number two, PDR 0564CGR2, Hillwood Expansion Revised General Development Plan with Rison, Victoria Ellis, George and Susan Ellis, owners, Sam Branch LLC, contract purchases, and it's a quasi judicial case. And it's amending and restating ordinance PDR 0564CGR to add 19.43 acres expansion parcels, providing for the reason of the 19.43 acres on the northeast portion of a 97.4 acre site. And 77.91 acres are already on PDR. The site is located on the north side of Waterline Road and approximately 2,500 feet west of the Lake Manatee Reservoir Dam structure in Bradenton, Manatee County. From A, General Agriculture, to PDR, Plan Development Residential Sunny District, and approve it a revised general development plan for the entire site for a residential project consisting of 252 residential dwelling units, inclusive of the previously approved development of 195 residential dwelling units. And the case manager is Ms. Dorothy Rainey. Thank you very much. And so uh, we'd like to ask the uh, applicant to make their presentation, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, Michael Neal for the applicant, Sam Branch LLC. I'm a resident of Manatee County, and I have been sworn. Uh, thanks for the opportunity for the full presentation. We were going to suggest that ourselves. Um, <clears throat> what you're seeing is an extension of our, um, I'll say, long approved since 2017 uh, Hillwood subdivision. Um, I'm here to introduce, we have a group of professional um, experts here, uh, along Richard Bedford, Vice President of Planning, Ed Vogler, attorney. Nathan Crott, engineer, Kara Koenig, 
uh, planner and Alec Hoffner, biologist. Uh, we just want to uh, point out this is an extension of, of a project that's uh, been approved and under construction. Um, we believe it's in the area that your comp comprehensive plan designates for growth. It's uh, UF3, uh, future land use, and we're seeking a rezone to PDR. Uh, we look forward to uh, giving a full presentation, of course, addressing any concerns you have. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Good morning, Planning Commission. Kara Koenig with ZNS Engineering, Pinellas County resident, and I have been sworn. So as Michael O'Neill noted, this is an expansion of Hillwood, which is an existing subdivision. The request before you today is a rezone to plan development residential with a general development plan amendment. To provide context of the project's location, the existing Hillwood and expansion area are located north of Waterline Road. Just east and contiguous to the Hillwood subdivision is the existing, um, the area of expansion and the existing Hillwood subdivision is currently under construction. The expansion area, as mentioned, is under the future land use category of UF3, which allows for a maximum of three dwelling units per gross acre, which is, which is consistent with the properties to the north, west, and south. The existing Silwood subdivision has um, zoning of plan development residential. It was approved in 2015 for rezone to PDR with a general development plan. And we are requesting a rezone on this expansion area, which is 19.43 acres, uh, to rezone to plan development residential. To the west is PDR, as you can see, which is Rye Wilderness Estates. Um, south is agriculture, and east there is conservation and plan development public interest uh, zoning, which is over the Mantee County owned lands. As previously mentioned, the expansion is to the existing Hillwood Preserve. It was approved in 2015 with a rezone to PDR. The existing project area is approximately 77.9 acres. It was approved for 195 single family detached units with a density of 2.5 dwelling units per gross acre. <coughs> there are no wetlands included within the um, already approved Hillwood Preserve subdivision. There was a specific requirement for 15 acres of upland preservation. With the final site plan approval of Hillwood, that upland preservation acreage was exceeded, and the current project that's approved includes 19.04 acres of upland preservation. The landscape buffers around the existing Hillwood exceed the standard buffers um, because there was a stipulation tied to the previous approval for upland preservation areas where they were required to be a minimum 50 foot in width. So the existing Hillwood has landscape buffers that exceed the requirement of the code. Shown here on the uh, slide is the phasing plan tied to the final site plan that was approved last year for Hillwood. And the final plat was recently approved in April 2023. So again, this existing area is under construction. There are no changes being made to the existing Hillwood Preserve other than an access area to provide access to the expansion area. So now to delve more into the general development plan amendment. Shown here is the overall general development plan. To the west is the existing Hillwood and that eastern um, property um, where the access area is being shown. I don't know if there's, oh, it's difficult to see, but the existing um, Hillwood provides the primary access for the expansion area. Uh, the primary access for the original Hillwood is taken off Waterline Road with inter-neighborhood ties to 172nd Street East and 7th Avenue East. And there, are, again, are no changes being made to the original Hillwood other than adding that access arrow to the east. As mentioned, the expansion area is 19.43 acres. We are requesting a rezone from A to PDR. We are proposing 57 single family detached units on the site for a density of 2.93 dwelling units per gross acre. The overall Hillwood subdivision, if approved, will be a density of 2.6 dwelling units per gross acre, which is less than the maximum three dwelling units per gross acre. The expansion area is exceeding the required 25% open space by providing 40%, 
we're meeting the standard um, requirements of the code for green belt buffers, providing 15 feet where required. There are 15, sorry, there are um, 0 0 0.0, 0.81 acres of wetlands um, included within the exp expansion area, which is comprised <clears throat> of Sand Branch Creek. And that is not proposed for impact. Uh, the 30 foot wetland buffers are being provided. There is 0.69 acres of upland preservation proposed within the, the expansion area. Um, however, the overall Hillwood already provides more than the requirement um, for upland preservation. And we'll delve more into this with our specific approval of request. There is one specific approval request tied to this application, which is LDC section 1001.1B3. Um, the, the, uh, the request is to provide access by easement to this area through an existing recorded 25 foot ingress egress easement to allow access by easement for a maximum of one lot. So the arrow um, that is the behind the specific approval request is in the southeast corner of the expansion property and there's an existing recorded ingress egress easement there. Um, the primary access through the expansion will still go through the existing Hillwood Preserve, but we are requesting this access here as well. Um, and Ed Vogler will speak more on this request. <coughs> Thank you, Karen. Uh, good morning, members of the commission. Ed Vogler, Manatee County. I have been sworn. Good morning. Pleasure to be here this morning. Um, in response to a couple of points, in the staff report and public comment and anticipated public comment, I want to make a few summary points without extensive elaboration, but absolutely prepared to answer any questions that you might have. One of the comments that was made was about access to Rye Wilderness Estates through the existing Hillwood subdivision, and the public comment that was sent to you requested that you not allow that access. And what I wanted to say, both to you and for the record, is those roads in existing Hillwood subdivision are already platted and dedicated to the county and accepted by the county. So those are already public roads. And so uh, that comment um, is, I think, unaware of that current condition. The upland preservation questions were mentioned and the existing project provides four plus acres excess upland preservation and we intend to uh, deal with that on the final site plan and make sure that the upland preservation areas are respected but located in an area that's convenient for development and use. In the staff report there was a notice of an agricultural clearing that occurred on the site um, some years ago. And uh, I, we have our expert here, uh, Alec Kaufner, that can speak to that as well. But I just wanted to point out in the summary fashion that that was prior to this GDP application. It was authorized by the current landowner and was a permissible uh, activity. But in any event, whether you clear land properly or improperly, it's a final site plan question, as noted in your staff report. And so if people comment upon it, that will be dealt with at FSP. But the most important point deals with, with this access point. Uh, this is the southeast corner of the site, and you can see there's a 0.69 acre upland parcel. By the way, the, the average elevation of that piece is about 35 feet above sea level, which is interesting, I think, in some respects. Uh, but you can see the environmentally sensitive areas adjacent to it, However, our plan would be to authorize that for one lot, for one building lot, 0.69 acres. We think it would be very attractive to someone. And so um, the specific approval request is sort of a belts and suspenders. I suspect that we were asked to do that early in the process by, by the staff for specific approval. However, uh, the way I read the code, uh, section 1000.1 B3 B specifically allows access by easement for one lot. And the width of the easement under that code section is 20 feet minimum required. In this case, we have 25 foot easement. Access to one lot should not require specific approval. I think the reason it's 
uh, being requested is because we haven't yet said specifically on our drawing that we would limit that parcel to one lot, but we will. And so therefore, I think uh, specific approval can be certainly granted in the context that it's presented. And if we designate that as one lot, I suggest that specific approval is not required. So in either event, it's uh, probably not a particularly important matter. Uh, but I did notice in the staff report, and th this would be somewhat alarming to me if I read it, and it says, well, some of the county staff is against this because of the adjacent water plant and the fact that, you know, additional uh, persons accessing one lot would have access to the road, and they make these comments and say, we don't support the specific approval. What I find incredibly ironic about that is the easement that we've been talking about, the 25-foot granted easement that provides the access, was granted by Manatee County. The county granted the easement in 1989. And I think it's somewhat incredulous to say that we will grant you this easement for access to this parcel, but you can't use it when you come in for zoning. And that seems wrong to me. But nevertheless, I wanted the record to cover those points. Happy to answer any additional questions. It was on presentations by request because fundamentally there's the application is consistent with everything, expansion of an existing project. There's a couple of these little tweaks that are mentioned, and we've dealt with them now on the record, and you may hear some public comment. And again, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, questions of the applicant? Anybody in the board that has questions in regards to this? I, I have a couple. Um, so explain to me, if you would, Mr. Vogler. Uh, thanks. Uh, this 0.69 acres, it is the implication, at least, that there is going to be a singular home there. Is that correct? It is, uh, Mr. Rutledge, but the, we haven't really said that in the application. And I think that that's probably something we should do. So when I get involved and look at this sort of at the end, like public hearing time, I say, well, you know, maybe we should do that. And so we will. Okay, so, so that, but that's a bit of a, yeah, I'm gonna kinda, as opposed to saying I'm doing it. So it, it makes it a little more difficult because I agree with you that most of the things seem like they follow the rights that you have. You're under the three. You have more green space. You, you've done everything else right. And this seems a bit odd to me and seems, I, I have a difficult time going against staff when they say they don't like that. Now, if you made the reference that you have a singular home and that says certain things about traffic and so forth, 0.69 acres on average would give you two or three units there maybe, right? So mm -hmm. I find that I appreciate that I trust you implicitly as I do the Neal family. However, you didn't say that. You said no, 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 I think it's a glitch in our, I think I have said it. It's a glitch in our application and we will limit that to one lot. And what I've suggested, <laughs> so, okay, when, when we review this, one of the things we can do is amend our general development plan and submit it to the staff. But then what happens is you get bumped from your public hearing schedule. Yeah. So we don't want to do that. So we come here, we disclose it to you. We accept a stipulation if you impose it at the planning commission level. And I'm also telling you that between that immediately following this meeting, we're going to present a new plan that uh, shows one lot limitation there. Okay, I think that helps. That's me. what we're going to do. Yes, sir, Mr. Roth. So you said the easement was approved for this location in 19 what? 89. And was the plant next door in existence, or did that come later? No, that was it was in existence. Mr. Turner, any questions? From the applicant? No, it's really good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, I'd like to invite staff up and uh, make your uh, comments, please. Dorothy Rainey for staff, and I have been sworn. Um, good morning. Good morning. I don't know if you want me to just do a very quick 
run through the items that were not covered by the applicant on my presentation? I think as you see best. Okay. Yeah, just, just some of the highlights that, again, that they may not have covered um, in their presentation. Okay. So the request, I won't go over. They've done that in detail. Um, the specific approval, um, well, I will um, talk a little bit about that eventually here. Um, you know what the zoning, the location, surrounding uses we've gone through. Um, basically, the positive aspects are what they don't summarize for you. <laughs> That's staff that does that. So the request is to add the 19.43 acres. Um, of existing uh, to the existing project already approved development so the infrastructure and other amenities will be available to serve the expansion of the project also the expansion parcels do not abut any existing residential properties or residential uses so there will be no potential for compatibility issues with large lots and a lower density surrounding use of the surrounding uses the negative is the expansion parcels were partially cleared with some tree removal prior to obtaining approval of the project, um, which also impacted potential gopher tortoise habitat to serve the tortoises on site. The mitigating factors are that we, we've provided a stipulation to require that the applicant address the tree replacement prior to approval of the first final site plan. And the, uh, the conclusion, of course, is that um, it's the opinion, opinion of staff that the request for the rezone of the 19.43 acres and proposed revision to the general development plan for a total 97.43 acre project, excluding the specific approval request for the access easement um, usage, along with the recommended stipulations, can be found to be consistent with the comprehensive plan and, the, and in compliance with applicable provisions of the land development code. Um, I want to now speak to the stipulations that were added and shown on the update memo. Um, unfortunately, it was like late in the, in the process here. Um, we um, acknowledged and, and made a decision that these stipulations need to be carried forward from the original approval because they're um, interrelated. Um, for one, there's a management plan that was required and provided for the original project area regarding habitat and how it relates to gopher tortoise habitat. Um, with the new expansion, it is adjacent to um, rye preserve and, you know, um, <coughs> preserved conservation lands that um, are likely going to be a place where the gopher tortoises can go. So if there are a few inhabiting the expansion parcel area, but, you know, need to move on to a, <laughs> to a safer, um, you know, preserved area, we want to make sure they provide the or leave the uh, upland preservation areas intact that are abutting that property. So um, we we do need time to to go through and and uh, figure out what exactly we need to carry forward and how the stipulations need to be worded to address the expansion parcel coming on board with the original project area that's already got approval approvals based on management plans and fish and wildlife permits for the gopher tortoises and all that so um, so the those stipulations are unfortunately they're, they're not in their final version they're, they need to be tweaked and adjusted again to make sense and to um, take into account the what what was already in a place with the original project area so um, so that's really all I have um, if you have any questions about all that so, I will try to answer them. Eric, is this on? Can't tell, but so. That's on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So, for the record, several of the stipulations on the environmental section are going to be updated by Dorothy mm -hmm. and the applicant. They were handed out in the update memo, but that be updated because this is a current case law. Okay. So, so we we can encapsulate I'll, I'll them. That in the motion. Okay. When we get to it. Well, yeah, they're they're all. Ne I, I feel they're all necessary. They just are not in their final form okay. to make sense and and to take, like I said, into account what was approved and addressed with the original project. And now with this coming on board, there are still gopher tortoises on the expansion area. There's still preservation necessary of habitat that will help you know provide a connection. Yeah. So the negative aspects to the habitat were not created by the applicant, and they're going to be required to remedy it. Correct. Yeah, there um, there was um, as the attorney um, 
Mr. Vogler uh, mentioned, there was some clearing. Um, staff Prior to, though. Pardon? Prior to. Yeah, well, right. yeah. <laughs> it, it was, uh, apparently, there was a free-for-all for clearing after Ian came through. There's other projects that <laughs> did the same thing. Um, however, our, our stance is, you know, we're the jurisdiction that's going to approve or deny your project, and we have rules about clearing in anticipation of development. And it's very obvious <laughs> they were anticipating development. Um, so uh, we feel that, you know, that Swift Mud's permission does not override, you know, our requirements and our permission. So we'll work that out. And some of the stipulations do address, you know, tree, the tree removal that will be addressed prior to final site plan of approval of the expansion. So, so the 0.69 acres in question, can we vote on that today? The we point six nine. Oh, you're talking about the um, the, the single portion yeah, to have portion. access by the easement. Is that part of the ordinance today? Um, that that is um, the specific approval to allow the access to that point six nine acres by the easement that the county granted. Um, we're staff did not the findings did not support approval of that. That's what. Um, that's why the exception. Yeah, that's why we I have an alternate motion. And of course, the reason mostly is the security of the water treatment plant next door and having access to it. And actually, I, I had a question for the applicant. The easement, I believe, only goes to the south edge of, of the county-owned property. How do, how do they go and continue down to Waterline Road to get public you know, access to a public road for that single-family home if they build one there? I don't see how they're going to achieve that. <laughs> They have to get an easement over several private property owners' property, from what I can tell. But maybe they can answer that on their rebuttal. It looks like he's ready. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ms. Right. Rainey, before, before you leave, <laughs> Ms. Rainey, before you leave, can I ask you a couple other things, please? So uh, first of all, I, I have such confidence in the staff. And when you tell me that they might have had something happen there that wasn't consistent with our codes and you'll make sure they will, I am so certain of that. Thank you. Well, I can give even more confidence because uh, in 2006, I was an environmental planner and I reviewed this. I produced the stipulations for this and, well, with Joel Christian's finalization of it because it was, I guess you know, a bit of a touchy situation. That I, I remember going out there with Bill Bors, our urban forester, and seeing with the decimation of all the trees on the site, the original site, and we had to, like I said, um, put together something to require that they do replacement somehow. So, and it, some of it was the preservation, as they mentioned, the 50 foot wide buffers around the perimeter is part of that um, re restitution, restitution, if you will. Of, right. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, I had, you know, I had to put on my environmental planner cap and go back in history and I found my old comments. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so um, I, I will have all that advantage in working with our current environmental reviewer to um, massage to these stipulations and make them work properly too. And are you comfortable with the representation that's been made that uh, this easement is a a right that they have and that in using the easement they have all the things they need to use it and that it is by code not 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 by risk of the water plant in other words i think those are two separate questions in my mind but by code they have the prerogative to do what they've described and 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 without them saying they're going to do it other than saying they're going to do it are you okay with that well that that's kind of a i think a, more of a legal question that I might defer to, <laughs> to our attorney. To, I think that's good. Okay, that, that's great. I don't but, think I'm qualified to make a final ruling about something like that. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right, thank you yeah. very thank much. Thank you. Mr. Rutledge, may I make a comment, please? Yes, ma'am, please. Um, we did try to read the easement, and it was a little unclear with, with public work staff, um, and I'm not an attorney, and they're not an attorney, um, but I think they did have some questions regarding that easement. So um, I think that's another reason. And um, we also did not know that they were proposing only one lot. Now we do have a section in our public work standards um, that does not allow access by easements uh, in the creation of a new subdivision. But it's not a new easement. So again, there's some legal issues here that I think someone other we than have staff just needs to that. review yeah. um, and, and come to some understanding on. 
Okay. Any other questions from the board on this, or the, the, the submission at this point? I think I'd like to hear from them. I think they've got an answer to some of the access. Okay. Uh, I think at this point we'd... In response to that question, could I answer the access question? It's a little bit so out of sequence, but I think it's appropriate. Well, so. in response to this question, but thank you, too. Um, could this uh, overhead go on, please? <clears throat> okay, so here is the first page of the recorded easement, 1989, OR book and page. You see recorded public records. Grantor of that easement you can see is County of Manatee, County of Manatee. And so then the, there's a legal description there in the center of the document, but there's also a sketch attached. I was just going to say my uh, well, no, title we couldn't is... we couldn't read you know the legal description per se, but the sketch is drawn by Leo Mills, and you can see I've I've put it in yellow if you can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, the legal description extends from Waterline Road, which is a collector road, 84 feet wide, and extends uh, 25 feet in width, all the way. Uh, up and past the subject property, but you can see the 0.69 acre parcel right there on mm -hmm. the corner benefited by that easement. And so I, I just think there's no doubt about it. We're not creating an easement to support a subdivision. It's an existing easement granted by Manatee County. And I mean, I don't know that you can come back, uh, how many years later is this, uh, 33? and say, my goodness, uh, we don't want you to use that easement. Oh, I think we do it all the time. Well, you know that, but. <laughs> that, that would be interesting to me, but. Okay, no, thank, thank you for that clarity. For staff, does it make it more comfortable that it's one lot right. versus the subdivision? For public works and the utilities department, I think yes, one lot would be helpful um, because I think that was the original intent of the easement. It was for a large, um, agricultural Comp compact. parcel, yeah. um, but I, I don't want to speak for them. They are the ones who developed the response to the specific approval, so we'll have to get with them. Um, Ms. Shook. Uh, counselor? I, I, my I'm just, this is the first I've seen the Manny County easement. I mean, nothing was submitted with the Crest Legal Services. No deeds were sent up to our office. So we only pulled the deeds we could find the records, and we didn't have the county easement thing. So I have no pain on this. I mean, it's the applicant's ball game on here. He, he, my well, it, has, it can't be used for public road because there's a reverted clause in it. And I thought it was being used for public road. I mean, there's nothing that. No they have to amend the application to straighten this out. It's been a mass confusion. Okay, may it I ask? It me a lot of time, but it was clear early on. May I ask this question? Would you think it out of the legal bounds of approving this with the assumption that they are going to, in fact, one, make it a singular lot, and two, that the easement will stand? Because those are the two uncertainties in my mind. Well, first, the planning commission, I was just going to amend the motion to make that clear. Okay. The applicant's, you know, subject to the application being amended by the applicant for the one lot. And then I was going to have the stipulation by environmental being fine-tuned by staff as well. Okay. I was going to incorporate in your motion. I can't resolve it today. No, no. I, and that, the county attorney's office doesn't do meetings and bounds sketches. I mean, we don't do that. You yeah. know, it's up to the applicants to submit these sketches. I, I understand. The specific approval letter from last April has no attachments to it. Okay. So in deference to staff, you know, they did the best on this. Okay. That's great. That's great. I think that's, that's helpful. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for public comment. And so anybody that would like to speak in regards to this... Particularly, would you please step forward, name and your residency? And I, I understand you've been sworn. Uh, yes, my name is Mark Vandery, uh, representing Waterline Road Preservation Group. I reside in Manatee County. I have been sworn. I would like to request uh, maybe a couple extra minutes. Um, I did have authorization from neighborhoods of uh, more than five signatures, but our power out there has been off at night for the last three days. I didn't have a chance to get my generator cooking, so I couldn't print out that authorization. That's all right. I, I'll there's a lot of things I, I'd you, like to ahead. cover. I'll make it Please. as quick as possible. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we are opposed. Well, yes? How much time do you think you need, sir? Uh, give me five minutes. I think that's reasonable. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, the... Uh, we, Waterline Road Preservation Group opposes this rezone, 
and we are specifically opposed to the specific approval request for this uh, using this easement. We're not even sure this easement exists. Uh, apparently it does from way back in 89. A lot of things have changed around that water plant since then. A lot has changed on Waterline Road, okay? The security around that plant has been hardened obviously since 9-11 and uh, more recently because of the uh, risk to access to the reservoir and the water treatment uh, for the entire county, okay? Now, along this easement area, I believe is also major uh, transmission, water transmission lines that feeds water up to Parish. And I, I can see the water plant people being very concerned about having general access to that area. That's a very risky thing to do, okay? In addition, this area for specific approval is right now conservation land. It's designated conservation. Why would you allow somebody to put a road on conservation property? That's going backwards. That's not the right use for this. Also, to access a lot, which is not in their application, I think they need to stop and redo the whole application because it is riddled with errors and omissions. Staff did a great job on picking these things up, but uh, it needs to be kicked back and revised and, and resubmitted. The timing is not right for this. I tell you, it's not right because there are so many questions and errors and omissions in the application, all right? To get to this property on the southeast corner, they're going to have to cross Sand Branch. What are they going to do, build a bridge over there? How would they do that? The county has abandoned ideas of, of crossing Sand Branch. It's a very deep ravine there. Now, in addition, that section of this property that's up for rezone floods. Look at the FEMA maps. It floods a lot. In the last 20 years, the county had to open the dam uh, uh, gates and flood downstream, had some evacuations down there. This particular property on that uh, northeast corner was underwater, and it's underwater a lot. I know that because my property backs up to this general area. It's separated by 20 acres of county property, okay? But I know what happens out there. I've seen it in the last 20 years. I've seen it firsthand. Now, the timing is not right. You got 57 more houses going out there. The people in Rye Wilderness Subdivision, they're complaining because, yeah, the roads are through on the existing uh, Hillwood Subdivision, but now they're going to have more traffic through their neighborhood. They don't want more traffic. Nobody wants more traffic, especially since it was kind of snuck in back in 2015, 2017 in the first place, this access through access to Rye Wilderness Subdivision. The stipulation for the original development was not completely defined in the application or even in the staff report. There is a 150-foot buffer required along the front of Waterline Road, and we're hoping that that remains, that that's not changed, okay? This particular developer and contractor has done some sneaky stuff out there. They said on this property where they want to have rezoned this 19 acres that the clear-cutting for agricultural purposes was done years ago. It wasn't. It was done nine, ten months ago. It was before Hurricane Ian came through. I know because I saw the bulldozers going in there ripping out the trees. It was done illegally. I don't care what Swift Mud said. It was done illegally. It was not done for agricultural purposes. It was a sneaky way to get in there and rip these trees out because... They were harvesting the rest of the 77 acres, and they figured, let's do this all at the same time. Now, in the process of doing that illegal clear-cutting, they trampled on the tortoises. Um, the environmental study that they present was done in November after the clear-cutting. Well, yeah, there's nothing alive. It was done after the clear-cutting. That's not what we want to see in our neighborhood. 
okay? So please reject this rezone at this time. Kick it back, have staff go back over it, have legal take another look at it. Talk to the water plant people. I think if there is an easement, it needs to be modified or severely uh, maybe vacated altogether because things have changed. Security issues have changed. It's not the same world as it was in 1989. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks for your time. Thanks for the uh, thoughtful approach, too. We appreciate that. Okay, is there anybody else from the uh, public that would like to speak, please? <coughs> Forgive me. Hi, Carol Feltz, by Hacker City. And, um, well, you always know why we come down here and what we have to say. Um, we've, we've known that since um, a few years ago when we, yes, sir. Have you been sworn? I don't believe so. Would you like well, that, to do that? That would be the start. Let's start there. Certainly. <laughs> I got here a little late because uh, I, of the traffic. Right. Uh, you didn't go unnoticed. Okay, so Carol Fouts, Mayaka City, you know why we come down here. Um, one of the things that I appreciate is that we have had people that have been submitting public comment, and I very much appreciate that apparently somebody is reading them and responding to them. And um, that's a good thing because we need productive dialogue on this. We have to face this one fact that we have been dealing with a tremendous issue in addressing the move of our FDAP. And every time we have dealt with something, it never stops. It comes back. It's what we say about if you let the camel's nose into the tent. And whatever, every time something happens, what do we all end up back here with? Asking for more. And at this time, we're looking at more when there are so many more things in this county that should give some pause to what we're considering doing. Right now, what is the condition of our county water? How many boil water notices do we have? How many uh, sewer pipes have we had leakage of, gas leaks? We have a tremendous amount of problems that we should be addressing as the public as our elected officials and as our planning commission. And when we come up with a situation like this, one of the things you have to realize is that we do live out there. And what we're saying about things like clear cutting, bringing in fill dirt, um, we know how it works. Right now we're looking at um, things that are uh, we're getting public hearing notices about now. It's on a, on the agendas for the BOCC or the public, uh, the planning commission. But we've been watching the clear cutting going on. We have pictures of an entire wood stork colony that went up in smoke and flames. We have pictures of our county fire departments coming out there and manning uncontrolled burns that went on at this place. But we're not scientists. We're not lawyers, we're not land planners. All we have is our own eyes and ears. And the eyes and the ears of the public are on this. And we can tell you what we see out there. The dirt gets moved way before. And we're, we're very much into um, our, our land rights. If I wanted to, I could bring in 10,000 tons of dirt and fill in my lake. And that's nobody's business but my own until perhaps because that lake was made to retain water and it floods my neighbors, which is exactly what's happened out there. So all we ask for is that you've heard some very good arguments from staff. No, the gopher tortoises, which are there right now, today, are not going to just pick up and, well, we're going to move. That's not the way it really works. They may migrate. Some may survive. But as you know, or you should know, tortoise colonies don't do that. They die of a virus when they're interacted with the other ones. But we still appreciate you. We still appreciate the applicant being so kind as to review our public comments. And we'd like for you to reconsider um, not approving this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else from the public who would like to speak on this issue, please? We welcome you and we, we appreciate your insight. So please feel free to come forward. 
If not, then we're going to close public hearing. So unless I hear anything further, we'll close public hearing. I've got a few comments. Sorry? I have a few comments. Okay. Um, the 25 foot easement to this single lot, I, you know, I'd, under, I'd understand the concern more if it was to the entire subdivision. But if this request was coming from an individual to have access to that lot, I don't think we'd have the problem. And the easement is, is it's in place already. Mm -hmm. I don't consider that a big security risk for one resident. Secondly, if um, we're requiring the developer to mitigate the habitat challenges that we have, then how else do we fix this, right? So if we're worried about the habitat, we're requiring them to fix it. How else do we fix it? Right. And the flood, the flooding, a developer can't be responsible for flood, the flood zones and things. So those are my comments. Okay, so you have any comments, thoughts? I, I concur with Ray and in his, in his points. You know that with that easement being there with with just one home being on that property, I don't really see that as a security issue. Um, more than likely, I mean, you have no idea what that one individual lot is going to do. But I mean, if I, if I had it, I think I'd have a gate at the end of the road for myself, right. preventing anybody from prying eyes, watering up on my own. On, on my own individual, I don't think we'd yeah, I don't it's think it's. Absolutely. Mr. Roth, you have thoughts? Um, sure. Okay. Um, I, I have a, a couple other questions, if you don't mind me being a little uh, neurotic about this. But I do think that the presentation, uh, Mark, that you made is, is helpful for me. So I, I have a couple of things. I'm just going to list them, and then I'm going to ask uh, the applicant to comment and then staff as best they can, understanding what we have gotten advised from council. And Mr. Rainey, I'm so happy that this is your project. I don't know if you are, but I am. Um, so there are a couple of things that came up that are curious to me. So my question, and I'm just going to put them out there, is that I, I would like to know who's in charge of security for the water plant? Who, who is authorized and responsible for saying the uh, water lines, the access, all those things are secure enough to meet the current standards? Because I do think the in 1989, it's not the same after uh, 9-11. It's just not. And, and I, I think that's a concern. I also think the uh, easement issue has to be sorted out because if there's something that's been granted, it's not that they haven't gone back, but I think you have to respond to that as a, as a question. The flooding, I feel like we have a great uh, um, staff that, that monitors that and they know the standard, which is you can do no harm. You can't cause more flooding and you can't stop them from having water. Um, the buffer, I think, is really kind of a question of what's, what's the standard. I mean, whatever the code is, the code is. We don't have flexibility on that. The clear-cutting thing really kind of bothers me. I have to tell you, one of the things I, the premise I use when we look at our approvals is that we're dealing with professionals, people who live in the community and care about doing the right thing. And this clear-cutting in advance or under the premise of other things, I've had people cutting mangroves down saying that they were, had a permit and they uh, bear in the shores and stuff. So I'm a little sensitive to that. And uh, I think that we need some thoughts on that. So I would invite the applicant to make a first comment on those, if you would, and then have staff kind of give us their insight. So Mr. Bolger, Mr. Uh, Neal, either one. Happy to make direct responses to those comments. Um, the security for the water plant is a Manatee County responsibility, of course. I would point out that there are existing residences in the area that take access off this roadway easement roadway and waterline road. Uh, the buffer, the comment was very odd to me because as, as our planner showed you, there's an existing project approved and then there's an expansion project. So the existing project had a 150 foot buffer requirement on waterline road that resulted from that original 2015 public comment and response to the board. And that's been preserved. It's, it's platted. It's, it's as built right now, 150-foot buffer in place. Um, I'm going to defer for one second on the uh, clear-cutting question and bring up Alec Hoffner. There's a couple of other points that I, I would like to make, and I appreciate the commissioner's comment. 
Uh, this is one very valuable lot, and it does not create a security risk. It just doesn't, of the magnitude that would justify the taking of a valuable property right? I mean, I guess you'll make that judgment in a zoning context. I, I don't think so. But, you know, that's the point, right? And I would say also, if it's limited to one lot, as I've said, my opinion is specific approval is not required. So actually, however you deal with that doesn't concern me today. Okay. Um, and, you know, the, the gentleman speaks um, ominously, but there's not going to be any crossing of Sand Branch Creek. I mean, there's not going to be a bridge. There's not going to be a crossing of the creek. What is it about this plan that suggests that might happen? Nothing. Okay. Okay? I mean, you, you can't simply say those things and, and create uh, angst, angst in, in people. Um, the, the easement that was granted, I showed you, county easement, 1989. We can talk about the, the date and time and the implications of that. Uh, but that was granted, and that, that county property directly south of this subject site is owned by the county, right? Do you know what the land use designation is of that property? UF3, exactly like this. It's not conservation lands. I mean, these are statements that are made that are not right. Okay. And, and you have to listen to them, and, but if they move you to a decision, it shouldn't be based upon facts that are not right. And when the developer stands here and talks to you, the applicant, you could say, well, they either have integrity or they don't have integrity, but the most important point is this. If we tell you something in a public hearing and you grant an approval on that, that approval is based uh, on that wrong fact, we are at risk. Yeah. And that's just true. So the applicant has to be accurate, scrupulously accurate. Others don't. Okay. Uh, flooding, look, th I said this in the comments, 35 foot elevation, okay? This is Florida, that's a mountain, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, everything flash floods. You know, we design our systems to the 25 and 50 year storm events. When you have a 100 year storm event. I, it's good background. I like to get accompanied by a little music, it's fine. But uh, um, when you have a 100 year storm event, there's going to be episodic flooding. The standard is whether it clears in 24 hours, even 48 hours. We had a 500 year storm with Ian. So, you know, yeah, there's little flooding at periodic times. After you build this project, it won't flood. Right, Nathan, our engineer? Okay. All right, here's another thing I just want to comment on. Excuse I, me, Mr. Uh, yes. I think you're entitled to have this noise. Can we turn this phone off, please? Or have the vendor? It's an alarm setting Is it a good one? No, it's good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, somebody's uh, going to be looking for something. Uh, we want to give you f full opportunity yeah. to respond to this in a way that we can not I'm be hoping distracted. hoping that you heard everything that I said. Yes, sir. Um, so, yes, it is the applicant's responsibility to describe the status of the easements and to make the record clear. That is true. And what I've heard today is someone say that that wasn't done properly. And I just want to cover something with you on that. Uh, I, uh, the county presented in their response questions, DRC questions, county staff writes questions to us. Sometimes the county attorney's office helps them form the questions. There are questions presented to us. And these are the answers that I wrote. They were then taken onto the ZNS stationery and returned as a response to those questions. This one, the property is served by one easement that extends from the property boundary south to Waterline Road, as recorded in OR Book 1187, page 3258, the very one that we put into the record today, the hard copy of it. I mean, it's readily known what easement it is. It's got a sketch attached to it. 
So anyway, I won't bore you with the total responses, but there was a full and complete response to these questions, to the applicability of 1001.1b3, the use of the easement for servicing this property. And so, I mean, if someone were to say that we didn't provide that information, that would not be right. And finally, I'd like to ask uh, Alec Hoffner to join me, please, and introduce yourself and tell them whether you've been sworn. Okay. Good morning. Um, I'm Alec Hoffner. I'm an environmental consultant. I work for Kimley Horn, and I have been sworn. Now, Thanks, I don't Alec. Wanna, Al, Alec is a common presenter here, and he's very skilled, and he knows Manatee County, but I want to ask him two questions to answer, and you can add anything else you want. Okay. Are you familiar with the agricultural permitting that occurred, and was it permissible? Yes, I am familiar with it, and it is permissible. And why? Well, I just kind of want to give a little context or detail as to the process that yes, was please. gone through. So um, the applicant came to me and asked me, you know, can we, can we do this? And um, the, the agricultural clearing on the property. And I said, I think so, but let me find out and make sure. And so as Manti County doesn't regulate agricultural activities, I then deferred to the Water Management District. And so I made a specific call to the Water Management District and talked with um, the manager there, the environmental manager, and asked the very specific question and gave all of the details about what we'd be doing. And I asked for his advice. And he clearly explained to me that it was an agricultural use and that it was exempt from any sort of permitting. And so I then relayed that advice to the applicant, my client, and they proceeded with the, with the work. So I just want everybody to understand that. It wasn't like we just went into it without any knowledge. We did do our due diligence. So <clears throat> this wasn't done in the middle of the night? No, sir, not at all. There's nothing sneaky or illegal? No, sir. No. Okay. S sneaky is a word that I resisted uh, commenting on, but uh, I, I do have one other question, though, and it's important. Are you familiar enough with the current status of the property and the work that was done to have an opinion as to whether or not fill material was added or dirt moved on the site? I have not observed any... Um, Material removed or added to the site fill material. Uh, strictly a clearing type exercise. Are, can I ask him a question? Would you mind, Mr. Pope? And, and so, are you pretty knowledgeable about soils? Absolutely. I'm a soil scientist. That's helpful. And so, uh, is there on this new expansion or modified property portion? Any significant muck holes or muck spots that would require fill, topping, anything like that that you know of? So we have, muck is usually associated with a wetland. Mm -hmm. I think everybody can agree upon that. Uh, we have done a wetland delineation on the project, and the wetland is limited to the creek system. Uh, we're not aware of any other wetlands. So there are no bogs time. there or something that they're not, off site that they might have covered up when they did the clearing or any of that yes, stuff? Because no. we, you and I weren't there, were we? I mean, I wasn't. Well, I, I've, I've been on the property. I was there before um, this activity occurred, so I, I did not observe anything like that. Okay, that, that's helpful. And that was Thanks. definitely not the intent of this exercise. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I, I would just make a final comment. Um, we don't roll in a sneaky way. We don't do things that violate the code. We read the code. We do read the public comments. We try to make full presentation. We understand it's our burden, and we believe that this is a prima facie case for approval. We actually think it's an easy approval, and the question of specific approval, don't debate it a lot. If you vote against it, it's fine. If you vote for it, it's fine too. We're going to make that commitment, change, perform that commitment. That's going to be one lot. It's not going to endanger anybody, and um, I, I just think this is not a difficult um, decision under these circumstances, but we'd be grateful for your consideration. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask if staff has any uh, rebuttal or comments. Ms. Rainey, I'd appreciate if you had any thoughts on this. Chair? Yes, sir. If I may, I know this mic's working. I had a question for Denise Greer on, on the specific approval issue. Yes, ma'am. She's the one who applies the testimony. So given the testimony he heard today, Ms. Greer, is it your professional opinion that specific approval is not required under Section 1001.1.B.3LDC to allow access by easement to one lot? I do not. 
because it's actually in the public works standard and we can do a design exception to that standard to allow that and in full disclosure that section of the standard is getting ready to change that will allow uh, one lot to take easement in a platted subdivision so I really don't think that it's required okay so when we do the motion I'll just take out that specific approval thing okay just refer to updating the environmental stipulations thanks for I that I just want to state that in the record yeah thanks very very helpful <laughs> it's helpful <laughs> makes me smarter <laughs> Dorothy Rainey again for staff and I have been sworn um, back to the the easement um, mr. Vogler was talking about just now um, the easement I thought it goes straight through that property to the south but in in fact it does not it it comes off the southeast portion the east property line of the expansion parcel and then is traverses conservation future land use category property as well as PSP one or public semi public one property to get down to waterline road and the same with the um, the zoning it goes through conservation zoned property and then the, the rest of the way it's the PDPI I can put this on the document camera if you'd like to y'all can put so yeah there there's the future land use categories that's UF3 it's not in fact over UF3 it's over conservation future land use mm -hmm. and PSP1 future land use to get down to Waterline Road and then the same with the zoning the zoning is conservation and then uh, PDPI for the water plant so I just want to make that clarification thank you and then also regarding the clearing of the land um, I did not specifically do this but if if need be we can go back and see who owned the properties between April and September of 2022 which is when the clearing occurred um, Jason Wagman was our environmental reviewer and I'm assuming he checked back at what the the most recent layer prior to what Ian uh, photography was provided to us um, probably showed it um, still the tree still there so so it's in anticipation of development obviously and we've made that case before on other projects as a matter of fact we made it on the existing project when they clear cut that as well without permission so that's just something I wanted to clarify um, and as I mentioned to the applicant at the time we discussed the this clearing and it's in the staff report the the post post Ian aerial shot is in the staff report on page 10 well 10 of 28 I don't know what it is on your agenda packet but um, it shows the the clearing that occurred and of course as I said it <laughs> it was just in the development area they didn't touch anything else so you know why <laughs> that's kind of a coincidence I don't think so anyway so um, you know we're again we're gonna revise the stipulations to address everything and you know that it again it's our our jurisdiction to approve or deny the project and it's supposed to follow our code requirements which does have a you know a requirement that they not clear cut <laughs> or remove vegetation in anticipation of development and I think we can clearly um, prove that it is in an anticipation again I didn't go back and look at the ownership but I, I can almost bet that you know they owned it back in April of 2022 so anyway that's all I have thank you okay thanks Ms. Rainey Mr. Vogler would you like to speak yes I think I want to rebut the uh, rebut um, so first of all, the real property land ownership is vested in the Ellis family, and it has been since about 1989. And uh, the potential developer of this property does not own it today. So that's a fact. And when um, my friend Dorothy says they cleared it prior to the development of the original Hillwood, I want you to understand that that they was not us. Okay. Some somebody owned that property at that time, did whatever they did on that property at that time, right or wrong. It ultimately got sold to us a couple of years ago. Okay. After the zoning was approved in 2015. So the they is not us. 
and that's that's really important. And um, so, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Neal. So, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Ed's <laughs> always extremely accurate. The Ellis family has actually owned this since 1925, approximately. Yes, sir. Victoria Ellis is, um, I believe, in her 80s, and I think it was either her parents or grandparents' property. Um, I just have to respectfully disagree with Mrs. Rainey. Um, you look at historical aerials from the 60s, 70s. This is a longleaf pine farm. It's silviculture. If you've ever been to North Florida on US 19, there's hundreds of thousands of acres of longleaf pine. So the Ellis family has <coughs> clear cut this property at Harvest. least three times in the last 100 years. Yeah. And, and um, just so for the record, uh, we purchased the property in 2021. Okay. So thank you. Can I ask you just one question? Um, the, the, the clearing of land under the agricultural banner is pretty common. And it, it happens a lot because there's not a lot of controls that the agricultural community has via zoning. So you're well aware of that, right? Yes, sir. And, and by the way, going back to your previous comment, I completely understand and respect the questions that you're asking of Mr. Hoffner. Yes, sir. I give you my word. There was absolutely no unauthorized clearing of wetlands. Okay. And as he pointed out, I called him before we did the limited clearing to make sure it was okay. So you can get, you know, God is my witness, there was no clearing of wetlands. Okay, that's thank I take your word, thank Th you. Thank you. Um, okay, um, any other comments from staff? Ms. Rainey, have any other thoughts or comments? Ms. Jack, do you have any no. comments, additions? No. Okay, um, last comments from the board. Mr. Uh, Turner, thoughts? Mr. Roth? Quite no, I agree. I, as, as much questions that was called to the county staff that they didn't have time to prepare and or that whether the developer didn't have time to deliver quality information i just I, i'm very happy with the presentation i think everything was set forth very clearly and and painted a very clear picture as to what's going to happen so okay i'm satisfied uh i would just comment that i i appreciate taking the time to go through this i i I also see that there are often times when we have some disagreements. I would uh, always expect that the developers in our community work with the staff to make sure that there's no incongruencies or inaccuracies, because I think that's sometimes where this falls. And uh, I, I find no fault about what was delivered or any of that. That's just not my specialty. I, I don't see any particular reason where we can, by our charter or our code or our obligation, uh, not accept this. So I'm going to ask for if there's any uh, uh, motion from the board. Put it on the electronic disposal. So, Mr. Chair, the motion for approval would be modified in two respects. Won't be to delete the findings for a specific approval since that request is deleted. It's up to the applicant putting in writing the one access to one lot by easement. And the only other modification would be in subject to um, modification of some of the environmental stipulations as stated by staff and the applicant in the record. Who's going to make that motion? It's already done. Well, it's already done. Okay. It, is the motion uh, as represented on the screen what you're proposing, uh, Counselor? Uh, mine doesn't work, so I have to look. Oh, well. Motion. Hey, Ray, share your screen, man. Well, the actual motion isn't there. It's just the... All right, well, then the motion... For approval, and I do have the two changes in the record. Okay, so the motion as on your as screen amended. with the modifications as council has recommended right. is what we're proposing. That's correct. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Turner has uh, moved. Mr. Smoke has, uh, has second. So would you please vote? And it passes 4-0 with uh, the chairman uh, absent. Passes. All right. Here's your gavel back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll resume the chairmanship of the uh, Thank hearing here. <laughs> Oops, sorry. All right. On to item um, number three, which is uh, presentations scheduled. So, Ms. Lidar, can you please read item number three into the, into the record, please? Item number three, PDR 2205-CP, Linger Lodge Road, rezone and preliminary site plan, White Oak Development, LTD owner, D.R. Horton, INC contract purchase. 
and it's a quasi-judicial case, and it's an ordinance of the Board of County Commissioner of Manatee County, Florida, regarding land development, amending the zoning, the official zoning atlas, ordinance 1517, as amended, the Manatee County Land Development Code related to zoning within the incorporated area, provided for the rezone of more or less 17.8 acres. Seven acres are already rezoned PDMU, and 10.8 and acres are zoned A1. Of the total of 30.5 acre project site. The site is generally located in the southeast corner of I 75 and Linger Lodge Road, and commonly known as 8240 Linger Lodge Road from PDMU STWPE, Plant Development Mixed Use Special Treatment Watershed Protection Evers, and A1 STWPE. Agriculture Suburban Special Treatment Watershed Protection Evers to PDR retaining the watershed protection evers and the special treatment overlays and approving a preliminary site plan for a <coughs> 99 single family attached residential unit development. Thank you. And uh, for the commissioners, have there been any ex parte communications regarding this application? No. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is that you would discuss? So uh, while riding in my neighborhood, which is just not far, uh, my wife read to me the article that was in one of the uh, online services, mm -hmm. and uh, she and I were talking about Linger Lodge's history and so forth. I don't know that it excludes me, but full disclosure. Ms. Uh, Shank, is that rise to a conflict? No, that's not even an ex parte communication. Okay. We I'll tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use that often, I think. <laughs> All right. All right. Very, very good. Um, if, if we could, could you please um, go ahead and make your presentation, state your name, and that you've been sworn? Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, Com Commissioners. Uh, Kyle Grimes. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Grimes Galvano, and I have been sworn. Thank you. Uh, I'm here today on behalf of the applicant, D.R. Horton. Uh, with me today, uh, representing DR Horton, I have Mr. Nick Aparicio, v VP of Land, Kim Miller, uh, manager, as well as our professional consultant team, uh, Dan Bond with our engineering, Michael Yates with Palm Traffic, and Carrie Kelly, our ecologist uh, with Flatwoods Consulting. Um, we're here today on a request for a rezone of a portion of this property to <coughs> plan development residential and for the approval of a preliminary site plan uh, for 99 single family attached units. Uh, as Ms. Leiter indicated, this site uh, is located at the southeast quadrant of Linger Lodge Road and I-75. Uh, on your right side of your screen, you can see it is made up of three parcels under common ownership. Um, and it, as you look at this property here on the left, you can see that this is in an area that has been largely developed over the years. Uh, it is in the surrounding areas primarily residential in nature uh, with both single family as well as some multifamily uses with apartments to the north and some condos to the south. <clears throat> um, and importantly, it is an area that has been significantly developed with public infrastructure. We have the extensive roadway networks in this area uh, ease availability of utilities for extension to this site, uh, as well as other public services that exist in this area. Um, this is really one of the, the few remaining kind of vacant lands in this area. Uh, and so we believe that is an appropriate timing uh, and compatible for requests uh, to plan development residential uh, with this site plan. Um, the future land use category on this site, it, it, this site is unique for several reasons, and one of which is that it has three future land use categories traversing the site. Uh, we have the mixed use des designation on the western portion, which is adjacent to I-75, uh, which the comprehensive plan generally envisions for a mix of residential and non-residential uses. Uh, we have the public, semi-public one, future land use category, which is for the Florida Power and Light transmission lines. Uh, and then we have the Res 1 category on the eastern portion, which of course is for your residential uses. <clears throat> the, when looking at the various characteristics of the site, uh, some being the future land use and others I'll get into in a little bit with regards to the power lines and 
uh, some environmental factors on the site. Uh, our client decided that with this surrounding area, the most appropriate use for this property is just a straight residential project. Uh, and so that is why we have come forth with a request for a rezone of the portion of the property that is planned development and the portion that is A1 suburban agriculture to plan development residential across the entirety of the project. Um, and that uh, proposed rezone is, is compatible with the surrounding area, which is largely planned development. We have uh, significant areas of planned development residential to the west, uh, planned devel development mixed use to the north and south, and it's compatible with the RSF1 to the east. Uh, there is some A1 zoning uh, directly to the east, but those are residential uses as they exist today. Um, <clears throat> so again, we, we do have a request for a rezone, which is, it, it's about half the property to PDR, making it consistent with the, the rest of the currently zoned PDR uh, section of the property as well as for the approval of a preliminary site plan for 99 attached units. Uh, and because that's a little difficult to see, we did create a graphic uh, color rendering that just kind of shows a little bit more detail so you can clearly see the proposed project. <clears throat> um, and I spoke briefly about the unique characters of this site. And, and that's something we, we look at and take into account when planning the, the site plan for the project. <laughs> And here, not only do we have some power lines and a power line easement down the middle, but on the western portion, uh, adjacent to I-75, there's a, a heavily uh, vegetated and wooded area. And so in planning for this project, our client looked to do a form of clustered development uh, over on the eastern portion of the site, which is uh, permitted by your comprehensive planning land development code. And the, the results of that are, are several fold. Uh, one, it allows the, the project to have a vast majority of open space. So we're, we're looking at 75% open space uh, for this project overall. And that includes the open areas uh, around the proposed um, single family attached units, the power line easement, and more importantly, uh, that large heavily vegetated area to the west. Um, and that's important for a couple of reasons in particular. Uh, this project is in the entranceway, which, you know, we have that view shed from I-75. So preserving that large vegetated area keeps that view shed protected from I-75, as well as maintaining that great buffer from sound and, and view, not just for future residents of this project, but for those that exist uh, to the east and to the north. Um, there is one uh, wetland on the site. It is in the northwest corner, so that it will remain in that area that's undisturbed. We have no proposed uh, wetland impacts, uh, and that includes no wetland buffer encroachments, uh, particularly with regards to the Braden River to the south of the site. So that 50-foot required wetland buffer will be maintained in accordance with your land development code. Um, as uh, uh, Rosina mentioned, we are in the Braden River watershed and special treatment. We are not requesting any deviations from your code requirements. We will, uh, through the course of development, be required to prove that we have met the 25% pre-development flow rate reduction, as well as 150% water quality treatment. Uh, and that's in part why you see those several uh, large ponds on the site um, that will provide for that water quality treatment, as well as it provide a nice amenity for uh, the residents, uh, potential walking trails around those areas in the open space. Um, as for some of the specific project conditions, again, uh, given the, the unique character of the site, we are clustering on that eastern portion. Uh, there will be one access to Linger Lodge Road. Uh, we are providing a stub out for a potential future neighborhood connection, which is encouraged by your land development code. Uh, there, there's no plans that I know of right now to have any connection to the east, but should that property be developed, it provides a, a rational connection point, as this will be a public roadway. Um, <clears throat> we are also providing right-of-way reservations along Linger Lodge Road for any future expansion of that roadway, and along I-75 as well. Uh, we are 
uh, providing for and meeting the required buffers, which include 20-foot roadway buffers, both on Linger Lodge and I-75, although the buffer on I-75 will be much larger given that, that preservation area, uh, as well as our 15-foot perimeter greenbelt buffer. Um, we, when, when working with staff and looking at the uh, access area on this site, uh, we did agree to, uh, Deerhorn agreed to go ahead and construct not only the sidewalks on both sides of the road internally, uh, but sidewalks on both sides of Linger Lodge Road uh, in front of the project were adjacent and, and provide a pedestrian crossway. So that will uh, provide a connection to the existing sidewalk on Ranch Lake Boulevard that goes uh, from Linger Lodge all the way up to State Road 70. So that, that will provide this neighborhood a pedestrian walkway up that, that road, as well as if uh, the county should so choose to extend that sidewalk to the east. Um, as I mentioned earlier, utilities are available in the area for extension to the site with uh, capacity available to service the site. Um, our traffic, uh, our traffic consultant, Michael Yates, uh, which I believe you know very well with Palm Traffic, uh, he performed the, the required transportation study, which was submitted and approved by your transportation staff. That indicates even with the, the projected uh, trips from this site, which are relatively low with the 99 units, uh, the affected roadways will maintain or exceed their adopted level of service. So we, we are meeting or exceeding those requirements. Um, with this request, we do have uh, two requests for specific approval. I know I've, I've touched on the unique character of the site and how we're uh, structuring this on just the eastern portion. So we will just have one roadway, but that will be a cul-de-sac that exceeds 800 feet. And although we're not required two means of access for unit count, uh, we do exceed that threshold for 800 feet. However, what we are, have worked with your staff and will provide is an emergency access uh, that will go from the, you can kind of see it between the third pond from the top and the fourth, that will go back to Linger Lodge Road. And so that will really meet the intent of that code provision is that, uh, you know, in cases of emergency, you have adequate uh, either emergency services ingressing into the property or, or if people need to get out. And so uh, we believe that will be sufficient and we will of course continue to work with your staff with input from emergency service, fire, EMS, to make sure that is uh, constructed to a suitable uh, a roadway for those, those vehicles. Um, the second request for specific approval, uh, this has to do with the entranceway requirements in, in section 900.5 of the land development code. It states that you can develop in the entranceway and to seek administrative approval, you have to meet several criteria. And one of those criteria is that you will preserve 75% of all trees uh, exceeding 24 inches. What that section also states is that if you don't exceed those, then you go plan development, and which exactly what we're doing here. But uh, staff requested that we, we submit a specific approval request for that, and so we have. But regardless of that fact, I still feel that our project as a whole really meets the intent of that provision. We're providing all of this uh, preserved vegetation and wooded area on the west side of the property and, uh, next to that entranceway roadway, I-75. So I believe, you know, with our, with our plan, we are going to meet or exceed <coughs> the intent of those provisions of that code regardless. Um, and so with that, as to wrap up, we, we looked at this area, the entire surrounding area. We feel that it is an appropriate timing for a residential development on this site. It is compatible with the surrounding development trends of single family as well as some multifamily in the area. There uh, is adequate public infrastructure to serve the site with, with good access up to major state roads and non-residential support uses. Um, we have reviewed your staff's um, staff report, and I thank Dorothy for all the work on this, on this project, and we agree with its finding, findings that this project is consistent with the comprehensive plan and in compliance with all of the land development code provisions and respectfully request your positive recommendation to the board. 
uh, I'm available for any questions. Our uh, team of professionals are as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, I just had one question. Uh, I was involved with the uh, use of the land underneath the power lines up there at the Walmart Center where the uh, Texas Roadhouse is. What is your agreement or what is the... Uh, what is the engagement that you have with the power company for that land, and what rights do you have, and how does that play into your submission? Please. Well, we have a, there is an existing easement, and we're not proposing to do any development in that easement. Right. Uh, for our emergency access, the, it does go out at an existing driveway under that easement. Uh, CAM has been talking with FPNL, keep, keeping them in the loop, and don't see any issues with it, but. Uh, we're not proposing any development within that easement area. And you have rights to do the things that you've designed with their prerogatives that they have for ownership. Correct. And and we could have rights in addition to that. You know, in those easements, you often have ability to do roads crossing and things yes. like that. But with the way we've designed the site, with preserving that other area, we don't see any need to do that here. So we haven't uh, pursued any of that type of development so under the power with, line. So with that easement running through there, or their, their land rights, is the consideration of the 75% of green space considering that or not? It does include it. Okay. It does include it. And you're, um, that's in line with your land development code. You're able to include those areas as open space. Um, and it is able to be included, even though that's PSP1, future land use, you, your uh, comprehensive plan provides when you have those for density calculations because you can spread it. That. You uh, count it based on the two adjacent land uses with the center line. And is there any intention or thought on making the a buffer piece that you have on 75 and that piece engageable by the community? Uh, yes, we're talking with our client about doing walking trails and stuff in the area, but we need to, to look at that and make sure that it's done in a, a smart, responsible way where we're not you know, having to tear out trees or impact the area. Building homeless camps. Right. <laughs> the thought. Okay. Mr. Roth. Notice that you have five ponds. Are those there currently, or are they going to be put in, and for what reason? Uh, those will be constructed to serve the stormwater needs of the site. Uh, it's for water quality treatment. They're not there existing today. That will be developed with the prop project. Uh, so that's to capture all the, the water on site, get that 50 or 25 percent runoff reduction, as well as 150 uh, percent water quality treatment. So that is to serve the site on, upon build out. Next question. Are there any environmental issues that have not been addressed? Uh, we have our environmental uh, consul consultant here, Carrie Kelly. Uh, we did submit an environmental study that was reviewed with your staff, um, and we don't see any environmental concerns. You know, of course, at this stage of development, there's several more steps to go through from an environmental okay. perspective. Thank you. Mr. Grimes, what is the origin of the unusual zoning designation for the agricultural portion that's adjacent to um, Linger Lodge Road? That was the design of the planners back in 1990 when the uh, land development code was adoption, okay. adopted. They put some PDR in it, various areas and why those lines are that way, I, I can't answer that. Okay, that just a remnant of a of previous, so there may have been more that was probably already rezoned, so. Okay, all right, it just seems a little unusual, so. So we have a public comment from uh, Ms. Morton regarding traffic. Could you address that? Uh, yes, and I, I'd like to bring up Michael Yates uh, to, to kind of talk a little bit more about the traffic. He, he knows it better than I ever will, so. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> so uh, w with regard to that, uh, Mr. Yates, if you could please speak to the, um, the serviceability of the road, the current classification, and, and how it maybe is viewed by the county currently. Okay. Uh, good morning. Michael Yates with Palm Traffic, and I have been sworn. Thank you. Um, so we – sorry, I'm getting my graphics together. Um, so I'll go through a little bit on the traffic and probably too much information, but just want to go through uh, at least the comments. I looks like it's hard to see. Uh, but essentially, uh, 99 single-family attached units. 
uh, would generate 46 a.m. peak hour trips and 55 p.m. peak hour trips. So a relatively low trip generation uh, for the project. Uh, we looked at, as part of our TIS and operational analysis, we used the county's procedures uh, for evaluating the roadway. Uh, so that includes taking what the existing traffic is on the roadway, what is vested or Approved. reserved, and then adding our project traffic on top of that. Uh, so the roadway would operate at level of service C. Uh, the standard is D. Um, we also, because we did an operational analysis, we looked a little more into the traffic than you know a typical TIS, where we also went out and did AM <coughs> peak hour traffic counts. Uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned about the AM traffic more so than the PM uh, traffic, uh, but they were relatively similar in volume. Uh, you can see the graph here. The uh, gray is the capacity of your roadway. 1190, that is based on the level of service tables from Manatee County. And the existing traffic is there about 350 cars. We add about 50 cars to that, so 400 in total. And so you're less than half of the capacity <coughs> of the roadway. Um, and so as uh, Mr. Grimes alluded to, we did look at um, the roadway section and what we were proposing is to have the sidewalk along the north side of Linger Lodge uh, that connects up to the Ranch Lake uh, existing sidewalk. So today, uh, from a pedestrian connectivity standpoint, there was no way to get there without crossing the road randomly, and then there was no sidewalk on the north side. So we thought this was important as a pedestrian feature to allow people to cross the road and to walk on the north side because along Lingler Lodge, there were no existing sidewalks in this area. So the sidewalk at Ranch Lake just ends uh, right there at the uh, corner. Very good. Uh, any questions for Mr. Yates? Uh, I have a question. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm just curious, since you have these uh, parcels of land that are part of the development, which go all the way to 75, I'm just curious why your commitment to develop the Linger Lodge piece only is the piece that the houses are on. So in other words, that, that parcel that's designed and goes all the way back up to Walmart is connected to this whole area here. I'm just curious why it seems somewhat arbitrary that you just stopped at that one point. I, I'm, I'm a little confused as to your... Uh, your improvements along Linger Lodge Road are only on the residential piece, not on the are, shared access. To are the you other. talking about on the north side? On the side north of... side, Linger Lodge Road, where you're doing these improvements you just spoke about, right? Yes. There is your parcel, which you are incorporating in your PUD, which is the power line section and then the undeveloped piece on 75. And you take no action on that, those other two parcels. I, I just want to understand what's the logic to that. Yeah, so we were, to our west is the FDOT limited access facility, and you get into the bridge section of uh, the crossover right. of Linger Lodge. So there was no point in bringing the sidewalk any further to the west particularly on either side of that road. It would not go anywhere and there was no pedestrian connectivity and you're getting into the DOT limited access facility. Well, so the only question I have is, I, I, I kind of go out there. So my curiosity is why you wouldn't go to the far side of that traffic so that all the traffic turning to the east off uh, that access road going north and south, your pedestrians would all be on the other side of that instead of in that traffic flow. So is the existing sidewalk on the east or west of uh, the east side of Ranch Lake? Okay. So it, so I have the graphic here so you can see. Yeah. So this is Ranch Lake right here. Yes, sir. So the sidewalk is right here today and it turns and ends right here. And so what we are doing is providing the sidewalk along the north side all the way along the north side of our property frontage and then doing a mid block crosswalk on the east side of our driveway. Mm -hmm. This gets people further away from the intersection, gets okay. further people further away from the ramp, okay. and then allows them to cross safely away from the intersection and coming over the bridge. 
That makes sense to me. Yeah. I, did that answer your question? Yeah, I, I was thinking that you would go past the traffic because all that traffic, a majority of that traffic when it comes south goes to the east. It doesn't go west. So I was thinking take the pedestrians away from that traffic count on the far side and put it over there and then cross over because you just you don't have the same flow of traffic there as you do on the other side. Yeah, and we moved it as far east as we could where I the understand. volumes were lower away from the intersection and where we controlled the right away because, you know, obviously Understood. there's ditch sections out there. Right. And so some tight right away to work with. <coughs> so. Understood. Thanks. All right. Very good. Thank you. Any additional questions for the applicant? All right, thank you very much. With that, we'll go to the uh, staff presentation. Who do we have for staff? Good morning. It's rainy, you've been busy. Still morning. <laughs> yes, good morning. Again, Dorothy Rainey for staff, and I have been sworn. And I will do a quick run through on this because the applicant's presentation was pretty thorough. Um, again, just the highlights. Um, the specific approval, um, I, I would like to point out there were two options. However, it, it appears the applicant settled on the one on the right, um, which is a shorter distance. There's a, the stipulation that we've provided gives them the option to <laughs> do either option <laughs> and to determine which one they're going to use at, at the final site plan. And, of course, it has to be approved by um, staff, um, whoever's reviewing for that. So, you know, staff may say, well, we think the... One on the left is probably better and accommodates us better, but it's going to be up to them at that stage. So I just thought I'd show those two access points. Um, and then, of course, going to the um, positives and negatives. <laughs> so the positives are that the, uh, let's see, I can't read it from there. The project is proposing 75% open space, which exceeds the 35% requirement for the project being in a coastal planning area. Um, the additional open space is mostly located parallel to I-75, where it will provide visual buffering along an entranceway, and I should add also, you know, uh, noise buffering. Um, the negatives include uh, the project is proposing a cul-de-sac longer than 800 linear feet. It's 1,310 as the only internal road to the ac access to the 99 lots. And then also the project is proposed within both the coastal planning area and coastal evacuation area. Um, mitigating factors would be that the applicant is providing the two options I just mentioned for the alternative access to the 1,310 linear foot cul-de-sac. And a stipulation is um, in place to require the applicant utilize one of the options to be approved, like I said, with the final site plan. And also the applicant will be required to prepare and submit a hurricane evacuation plan as stipulated. And a uh, stipulation is provided to include the notice um, in the notice to buyer, I, I think I'm missing part of that, um, let the residents know that it's subject to um, evacuation. Um, and our conclusion, of course, is that um, the proposed rezone to the PDR with a preliminary site plan to develop the 99 single-family lots and associate infrastructure together with the specific approval requests and the stipulations provided can be found to be con consistent with the comprehensive plan and in compliance with the applicable provisions of the Land Development Code. And that's all I have. Do you have any questions? Very good. Any questions for staff? Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> with that, we'll go to the um, public comment portion of the hearing. I have one speaker signed up. Um, if you would, please step forward, state your name, and that you have been sworn in your county of record. And it's uh, Eliza Evans. Is that yes. right? Elise Evans, um, Manicate County resident, and I have been duly sworn in. Thank you. Okay. I would like to address the fact that the, um, the public was not duly notified of this project. The uh, couple of things I have is the camera's on, correct? Um, here's the first sign on uh, June 30th. At 342. I passed by a couple of hours earlier going out shopping, and when I came back, there was the sign lying on the ground. So I contacted Manatee County about it, and this was their response here. They would have somebody go out and look at it, or fix it. Actually, they said the applicant will go out and fix it. The next thing is um, July 8th at 1 p.m., there's no signage. This is the driveway access to the current property. This is Ranch Lake Boulevard over here. So then we continued, and we have 
um, July 8th at 6.39 p.m., driveway, Ranch Lake Boulevard here, still no sign. Um, 7.10 at 12.47 p.m., no sign. Here we have 7.10 at 7.19, no sign. 7.11 at 5.56 p.m., no sign. Finally, on 7.12, one day before the meeting and one day after the comments are allowed to be submitted, there's the sign. There's the 8240 Linger Lodge Road, and there is your sign. So this was never notified. In addition, um, I posted this on social media because the sign never came up, and this was one of the responses I got when the, I asked, has anybody seen the sign? And it says, it's next to Linger Lodge Road at the far left of the front yard of the single house that's set far back. We pass that house every day, but this is the first time it's been up that I've seen. So we were never notified of this. And for that reason, I think you should um, not approve this. Is that, is that everything? That is everything. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank can you very much. Can we ask questions? Uh, uh, if, if it's relevant. I'm curious. It, it, do you have any particular thoughts on the project itself other than the process? I, I get that uh, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do have a thought on the process. Um, and, far, and again, I, your, your time. It, uh, okay. My yeah. time's going. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So. Um, there is multifamily housing on Ranch Lake yeah. far from us. But everything east of 75 mm -hmm. and right before the Johnson Preserve and south of Linger Lodge Road are single family homes on one or two acres. Now that we have Braden Woods to the east and we have Terra uh, to the west. And as far as um, the gentleman saying that road is adequate, a Ranch Lake Boulevard is really uh, pretty narrow and you have to make several stops and left turns to get out on 70. So the only other accesses are Terra Boulevard and Braden Woods. And I just don't think it's right to have people driving through a subdivision like that constantly on all those cars. And uh, 45 cars per day, I, I don't think so because the average um, family, new modern family, has two cars. So that would be 198 cars per day. That's, that's presuming everybody drives every day, but. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, okay, but anyway, that's, right, that's th the thing. Anyway, it's just not yeah. in keeping with the standards of a neighborhood, even though uh, a couple of blocks away on Ranch Lake, they're all multi-family multi homes. Right. All right, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, again, that was the only uh, speaker I had signed up, so if there's anybody else in the audience who wishes to come forward, uh, please do so. You have to, you have to actually come forward, uh, state your name, and that you have been sworn. Well, I've been sitting here. This is uh, my name is Doncy Beard. I have been sworn. Thank you. I, I'm a resident of Braden Woods. Thank you. And uh, I'm not a very good speaker. I've I've been impressed by what I've heard today. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, though, being in Braden Woods, the traffic truly is one issue. We have. I sent in my comments. I don't know if anyone got to read them. Because I don't, I'm not really techy, so <laughs> uh, it did come in though. And and my my point was, we have in Braden Woods children that are picked up at early, really early in the morning. It is pitch black. We have no very few street lights, and I think the added traffic is really a safety concern in that respect. Also, I heard when they were going to do this subdivision that the power line area would block a lot of the noise from that, from 75. I can tell you, I live away from that area and there's traffic noise. And we, we actually at one time asked for the, the big walls to go up to stop the noise from coming over. But that didn't happen because I guess we don't have enough uh, multiple housing or something there. But anyway, that was blocked. But, but it is, uh, it's a change. I know people need places to live, but that area, uh, talking about wildlife, since they have the Johnson Preserve, uh, all of those animals kind of moved around, kind of into our neighborhood, and I know they're back in that area that's going to be built up now. So I'm against it, uh, but you know, you're the ones that have to make the decision. I, I just feel it's um, 
maybe not really well thought out when they talk about putting the ponds out there, the little lakes in the subdivision, that noise from the, from the interstate will bounce off that and come on, on in. I've lived in an area where that did happen. So <coughs> that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm hoping that, that uh, it doesn't go through or is amended in some way to put four houses on one lot. We have one house on an acre. Uh, and that seems like enough to me. So good luck with all that, and thanks for listening. Very good. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? You have to come forward. You, <laughs> you don't have to be recognized. You just have to step up. It's a Girl Scout <laughs> thing. Hi. My name is Lisa Prig, and I am sworn in. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for hearing us all out today. We really appreciate it. I am the president of Braden Woods Homeowners Association phases one through four. I am not a good public speaker either. Um, I agree with what everyone here has said. Um, Mr. Yates, I appreciate what you have said, but our front yards are on Braden Run. And unlike Tara and even River Club has the same situation that we do. Their front yards are on uh, Braden Run as well. Tara at least has secondary roads where, like Lakewood Ranch, the homes are off the main thoroughfare. We are inundated now with traffic. We are getting the traffic that are going to the apartment buildings. We're getting the traffic that's coming off of Lakewood Ranch. They want to cut off that corner at Lakewood Ranch in 70. We do not have double striping like uh, River Club has. We, I've already called the Sheriff's Department to please come down and do something with our traffic. I represent what, 321 homeowners in Braden Woods. Everyone is scared to death about what is happening here. And by the way, the, the gal, yeah, ma'am, thank you very much. She's absolutely correct. There was no posting of any sign whatsoever on a public hearing. I found out about it last night at 7 o'clock. And that's really not fair to the other residents who would have at least had some input. I also agree the traffic, there's more. If you're putting up 99 homes, kids, they do drive. Let's say you have 1.5 cars, 1.25 cars per home. That's more than 50 extra cars. We've got people now speeding down Braden Run. Uh, we can't, we're having a hard time controlling our traffic. You're going to decrease our property values by adding this additional amount of traffic onto our roads. Because you go out by Texas Roadhouse, you can only make a right. You go out Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, you get a light, and you're going, they make a left. The only avenue to get out from Ranch Lake Boulevard and Langer Lodge is down Braden Run where there's a light. That's it. And on top of that, we've got campers. We've got a five gross weight tonnage limit on Braden Run. We're already got all those campers coming down there. And we, I, we're trying. I'm calling the commissioner. I've called Vanessa Baugh's office to try to do something already about our traffic. And having all this at Linger Lodge is a great place. I think the extra 99 homes on that part, you're just adding more, it's, it's just adding way more traffic and more people than we can handle in that area. Please, please, <coughs> we re request very much so. Please do not allow this to go through. Okay, thank you please, very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else, please come forward, state your name and that you have been sworn and you'll have three yeah, minutes. I've been sworn. My Thank name you. is Thomas Faircloth. I live on 84th Street Court East, <clears throat> which is right across the street from this property they want to develop. Um, I came to Manatee County when I was in second grade. I went to Ballard Elementary School, went to the brand new Jesse P. Miller School. I've seen this county change from a pristine paradise, beautiful city and county, to next to toilet now. With the increased development, I used to live in West Bradenton in my grandmother's old house. I bought it from my uh, relatives when they passed away. And that neighborhood, when, when I was a child, we had a doctor next door on one side, a developer builder on the other side. County commissioner lived across the street. It was beautiful. It deteriorated quickly. 
and uh, I wouldn't let my dog live there now. Uh, I moved out to where I live now in the early 80s, and I, brought, I bought two acres with a house on it. I've had several occasions with the planning and development. I went to visit them at, from time to time. Very nice people. Uh, I expressed I wanted to buy some property there that was vacant at the time and told them what I wanted to do with it. Well, they took me in the back room and they showed me the maps. When my house was originally built, it was zoned five acres by, and it was a watershed district. In other words, they didn't want a density putting pollutants in the river, which is not far from my house. In 35 year, over 35 years, I never put one bag of fertilizer on my lawn to have it wash off and go down the river. Uh, I pay a lot of taxes to enjoy this property and my neighbors, and Braden Woods is on one side of me. Uh, recently, they developed across the interstate from me, put all these houses where you could shake hands with your neighbors. They said that would never happen on our side of the interstate. The, the county planner showed me the Army Corps of Engineers designated five acres for one house because of that problem. When they allowed my developer to build on two acres, they violated the, the uh, agreement with the, with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. They said they would never do it again. I pay almost $6,000 a year in property tax. They finally got rid of the ghetto Linger Lodge, cleaned it up, it's beautiful now. They got rid of the child molesters that lived in there, the dilapidated trailers that were there for years, with people living year round. Now you want to put 100 homes and build another ghetto across the street from me and, and put you know, 100 families in there, two, three, maybe 400 people, and uh, I'm against it. I think we should try and maintain and as much as we can. But if you do go ahead with this, I request to reduce my taxes in half because I will no longer enjoy <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> Thank you. Again, is there anybody else who wishes to come forward and speak on this application? Come forward, state your name, and that you have been sworn. Carol Feltz, uh, my Ica City, Manatee County. Um, and that you've been sworn? This I have isn't been your sworn. first time. So. I have been sworn, <laughs> yeah. Um, first off, I really want to thank the people who have shown up here. Um, this is was previously in part of my district when uh, we were in District 5. Um, it's no longer part of my district, but um, I'm very familiar with Linger Lodge. They've done some tremendous things there. Um, I'll be going there Sunday for their Bloody Mary specials. And um, these are people who are homeowners who have pride in their community. And one thing that we're seeing um, with the massive amount of development is our rise in crime. Um, every day, even in the best gated communities, um, we're seeing a rise in crime and this makes um, it much more difficult for us to back the blue when we're packing so many people in a place that what happens when you put a lot of rats in the same cage, they end up feeding on each other. The traffic issues over here with the school children, I actually, took a ride down there and followed a school bus. And there's no accommodating for this. Um, I thought that our kids out in the country had a hard time sitting out there in the dark waiting for a school bus and spending two hours of their school day on a bus. But what I saw in the Braden and Tara uh, following some of the buses around, this is gonna create some very um, dangerous situations for our kids. And the last but not least thing that I think begins a legal challenge to this that we are trying to get everyone to take more seriously. The signs do not work. They're not fair to us. They are not sufficient. They are not adequate. There is not enough information. Now, I've already been known as the sign lady about this for about four years now. They don't work. You have people, this is a legal obligation that you have to post a public notice. It is also a legal obligation that you have to put those signs up and to put those signs up in an adequate amount of time and for those signs to be adequate for a sufficient public notice. 
You have eyewitnesses. You have people telling you that the job was not done right and adequately. And we've tried to tell you all along that it doesn't work. And look at some of the progressions that are in other counties. Sarasota County requires a neighborhood meeting. Manatee County does not have that requirement. Uh, when people are telling you, we're trying to follow the rules, we recognize that you're trying to follow the rules. Thank you. And, and when it hasn't been followed, you have a legal impediment. We did not receive adequate public notice. And that needs to be addressed because it is a legal issue. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to come forward? All right. No, you. I'm sorry. You cannot. No, you can't speak from the audience, and you. You can't. I'm sorry. You can't do it again. It uh, creates a violation of the process, and it creates issues. You will have an opportunity at the Board of County Commission meeting to speak, though. All right. With that, any. All right. It's a gentleman who knows the process. <laughs> Uh, can we, um, can we get the uh, folks in the back? Uh, I can't hear. Just give him a moment. I think it goes through a soundboard. Carol, you broke it. Uh, okay. I, th I thought you were cutting Carol off, so that you're out of time. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay, great. Yeah, Mark Vandery, Manatee County, I have been sworn. And um, yeah, the uh, I'd like to know, is this going to be deed-restricted uh, development? Uh, will there be uh, a gated development? Uh, are there any... Um, Site plans, more specific, showing the, how it's laid out, any roads, that sort of thing. Um, one, one area of my concern with this development that's been going on around the county is that are the densities. Uh, I mean, we have the Braden River nearby. Uh, I'm not sure if this parcel is in the Braden River uh, protected watershed area or not. Um, I know there's been a lot of development along the river. I don't know how much protection you want to give to the Evars Reservoir, but I can tell you uh, further out east, the Manatee Lake Reservoir has got a really bad uh, cyan, cyanobacterial algae problem right now. And um, when you start increasing the density of your developments in these areas, in these watersheds, it <coughs> makes it only worse. Now, one resident was proactive enough to be mindful and not use a lot of fertilizer or any fertilizer to, for fear it would run off and contaminate the river. That's very commendable. Back in the old days, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago when I was living here, people were seeming to be more, more mindful about that. Around about 2010, 2012, we came to the commission meetings and we remarked that if you don't do better planning, more proactive planning, more smart development, then instead of Bedford Falls, you're going to wind up with Pottersville, okay? You're going to change the entire complexion of the social structure of the county, and you're going to have more transient residents, and the overall quality of the neighborhoods is going to go down. And I see that happening. The folks that came before me on this development see that happening. And uh, I just think we could do better. <clears throat> I say don't approve this rezone. Thank you. Thank you. Again, is there anybody else who wishes to come <coughs> forward and speak on this application? All right, seeing no one else come forward, we're going to close the public comment portion of the, of the hearing and open it up for questions. Uh, first of all, Mr. Grimes, was this application properly noticed? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So let me go through the, the notice requirements. Um, one, 
I know there was a comment about a neighborhood workshop. We did do host a neighborhood workshop. We sent out mail notice uh, as required by the land development code for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, although there might not be a requirement in your code, I can assure you staff has been uh, pushing us to do them on every right. project. How, how many people attended the? Uh, we did not have any attendance on that. And <laughs> we sent mail notice as required by the code with 500 feet around the entire so perimeter of the project. We sent the uh, scheduling legal description of the project to the property appraiser. They create the list of all uh, property owners within that boundary. I think we had 64 or somewhere around there that were mm -hmm. noticed via mail. Okay. And then uh, we do the same thing for uh, the, this planning commission. We do the mail notice, that same 500 foot perimeter. And also you have the notice posted uh, on your website. And we did post a sign uh, for this site. I have a few images. So this was from the original posting. Um, we can see this. Uh, the original <laughs> posting, we did put that right at the front of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, we were notified at one point that it had uh, fallen or been tossed to the side. So uh, we went out there, and it would either blown back or, for whatever reason, was back in the bushes. It was pulled out, reposted, uh, and then we were noticed two days ago that somebody said it was not there again. So went back out, and it was completely missing at this point. Somebody, I don't know what happened, but it was not there. We immediately told the county. They said they were putting together another uh, sign, and we went out yesterday morning and put that up as soon as we got it from the county. Hmm. So, you know, that that's one of the reasons we have these multiple mechanisms of notice in your land development code and statutory, you know, for these things. And, and we have uh, met our, our requirements of your code for those notice. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have still another over 30 days before this comes back for the board. Uh, I will uh, make sure to have somebody go out there and check that sign regularly to make sure it, it doesn't get blown over or, or removed. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. so that that's what we have for the notice, Mr. Chair. Could I ask one other question? Oh, Mr. Roth. Sorry. On this property, how many signs were supposed to be erected or was one sufficient? One was the requirement for this. Uh, we really only have that one area up on Linger Lodge Road. Uh, to the south is the Braden River. To the uh, uh, to the west is I-75, so we had that one sign requirement for this this project. Okay, Mr. Have you gotten any references to the QR code that's on the sign that people can just shoot and scan? Have has anybody responded to through that? Uh, I haven't received any direct. However, uh, you know, over the last week or so, we did the county did receive many many public comments uh, that were forwarded to me by Dorothy, and I did review them, and I believe those go to the county, correct? And those are the ones we have in the um, in the uh, package. Yes, I received many comments and were posted in the system. Right. So, so evidently, somehow, my my thought is somehow people have seen it. We yeah, we have the, 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 the... I'm just saying, I want to... We can provide the information for the mail notice, too. Okay. Right. And, and definitely somebody get the notice because we get a significant amount of comments. And then there's also the... the, the recent. And the applicant has been proactive putting back the, yeah. the, the sign. Okay. Right. With regard to this, did the applicant take the side now? Sorry? Did the applicant take the side down? We did not take the sign down. We've only okay. put it back up. So um, it could have been somebody else. I know you didn't say that, but uh, it could have very well been somebody else who thought they were interrupting the process, remove the sign and toss it in the bushes. Or, or I mean, or that it, that's a know, possibility. Heavy wind There's no evidence of that, but and they blow over. This is yeah. These are not very so, durable. I I would suggest that um, if somebody was trying to interfere with the process, that that kind of has a counter to it. It, it you hurts know, everybody. It, it hurts people that can't come out and then speak or voice an opinion on that. So just uh, maybe um, tell your neighbors, communicate the issue. Uh, word of mouth is probably better than a sign anyways. So, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to mention that it is only 500 feet. Yeah. And 84th Street Court East is more than 80, is more than 500 feet from the right. site. From from the uh, information I saw, I think there's probably around 40 properties within 500 feet. So, so all right. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, did that? That's all. I was just right. curious at the response. You can tell whether you're actively marketing something by response. So if we've gotten responses, it's something's <coughs> happening. Yes. All right. And then um, 
I, I just have one other thought. I just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very uh, positively influenced by the fact that the area underneath the power lines will be engaged and part of the <coughs> other side of the property. In other words, I think that having 75% of the, 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 the space or the land or the site being a green space is significant. In other words, everybody talks about not doing development, but if developments are done right and you get 75% of the land not being covered in asphalt or concrete or whatever, that's a positive thing. So I'm very excited to hear ultimately when this goes to the board what you're able to accomplish with that and how that becomes part of the community access because that walkway, there are people that do a lot of walking and riding around that side over there, come down Linger Lodge bikes and all that. So I would love to be able to think that that could turn into something that's more than just for that community and then it adds back to the community there. Uh, the, the other, I remember the other point I was gonna ask about is um, with regard to the, um, the allowable, the development that's being presented, uh, we had one of the neighbors address or bring up concerns related to um, the previous, previously um, restricted uses in this area. Um, this application is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Do you know when these modifications were made? Uh, th these are in place with the adoption of the comprehensive plan in '89. Mm -hmm. uh, replace these future land use categories and, sorry, uh, and. Um, when we looked at our uh, maximum allowable density utilizing these three future land use categories, that would be about 4.17. We're proposing 2.87, I think. Okay, all right. And um, the, the, again, I've mentioned it before, one of the things we look at is the comprehensive plan, that it's consistent with, with uh, the comprehensive plan. So um, any other questions for the applicant? No. We'll go to staff closing comments. Next. Uh, Mr. Chair, while staff's yes, coming down, I just want to clarify that the applicant's testimony was under oath and they're also required to file an affidavit of notice as to their posting and mailing. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Roy, agenda coordinator, filed her affidavit of notice as to publication on the website. Right. And the fact that signs blow around all the time does not create a legal issue right. that there's no notice given. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good, thank you. Ms. Rainey, if you would please close in comments. Sure, thank you again, Dorothy Rainey for staff and I have been sworn. Um, I just wanted to um, go back to address some of the um, speakers uh, that came up um, about the project, about the, um, it is in the Evers Watershed Protection Area. Um, I believe almost, the, let's see, Co Evers Watershed. Um, it, the whole thing is within the Evers watershed. And um, as a result, we have stipulations that cover um, the requir extra requirements for stormwater and runoff and all that. The uh, stipulation number C2 says this project shall be required to reduce the calculated pre-development flow rate by 25% for all stormwater outfall flow directly or indirectly into Braden River watershed. Modeling shall be used to determine pre and post development flows. And then also stipulation C3, this project shall be required to provide 150% water quality treatment for the Braden River watershed. Um, and there's a few others, but that, those are the two main ones that um, ensure protection of the Evers watershed. So I just wanted to mention and those, That's consistent with every project in yes, the Evers? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Right, but uh, just like the speakers that came up, I want to make sure they understood that. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, applicant closing comments. Uh, again, Kyle Grimes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe, you know, through our presentation, we've really hit on a lot of those issues that was raised by the public, particularly with regard to traffic. I think we've, we've really explained uh, this area and that we meet the requirements of the comp plan and land development code. Um, we've, we've, we've touched on notice already. Um, you know, I, I just think this is a great area. We, we hear a lot lately that we want to see developments in areas where we have infrastructure and things in place. Uh, you know, this is very clearly a, an area of the county that has that infrastructure, has ease of connection to utilities. The county's planned for it. Uh, so we feel it is a very appropriate area for this development uh, and excited for the, uh, you know, the things that DR Horton is putting in place with regards to those preservation areas and the large tracts of open space. Uh, so uh, appreciate your recommendation of approval. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right, we're going to close the public hearing and open it up for discussion, debate. Or consideration. And get a couple of comments because I think it's a it's a fair concern for 
for Braden Woods with the traffic coming. I'm guilty. I don't speed through there, but I cut through to to uh, River Club to go see friends. But if I'm looking on the map, it, you know, it's it would be a real zigzag for them to come out of this community range. The Ranch Lake Boulevard, if I'm looking on the map, is a really direct route out, and they can get gas on the way out. So I'm just looking at it going. It, it'd, be a, it'd be a big zigzag through Braden Woods, so maybe it's not as much of a concern. Um, the preserve, that's why a lot of trees as a buffer. So there was a noise comment. You know, in Braden Woods, you don't have that. So you would hear more noise from the, from the road. Um, last comment was... Um, you know, about bringing down the neighborhood and stuff like that. I live in District 5. There's a desperate need for affordable housing. If you've got some 20-something-year-old kids in your house and you're trying to get them out of there, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't think that they're, you know, D.O. Horton is building a slum here. We've got all that. We've got all that space, the preserve. I think this is good for District 5. In that way, we need affordable housing. It's re it's crazy out there, right? Imagine coming in, you're in your 20s now. How do you afford anything? So in that way, my comments for what it's worth. Thank you. Any any other thoughts? I, I just like to, you know, I live in Braden Woods, so full disclosure. And I drove by there, and I disclosed that, that my wife and I were talking about it. And I can say this. The traffic there is problematic. You know, in the last 12 years, it's just gotten worse. And by the way, I grew up in South Florida. It's going to get worse. However... When you can keep 75% of an area undeveloped, I just think that's a good, that's a good barometer for me. I, I, I understand about the traffic because these are national standards and they make them up, and a, but no offense to engineers, but they make up these numbers and they bring them in here and you're, you're fantastic. You believe it every single time, but I don't. I mean, it's just not, it's just not accurate to my opinion. However, having said all that, um, the engagement of this property, the way it's designed and what it does for the green belt, because I see the deer that run along there and they run that corridor and they run to the river and they run all the way through our neighborhood, my backyard. I think this 75% open area gives them a better chance. That, that's my opinion. And I think that's valuable. Uh, the hawks that are there, the eagles that we see, um, you know, all that, all the bunnies, all, this kind of development progresses that in a way that I think is a balance between full development of, you know, 250 units stacked on top of each other versus having some open space. So I'm going to vote for it. I'm going to add traffic in my neighborhood. I live on Braden Run Road. I mean, I, don't, I wish they wouldn't, but they, they have a right. They have their right. So I'm going to vote for it. Are you volunteering to sell your car? <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of running. Does that help? <laughs> Very good. All right, any, anyone else? All right, let's go ahead and uh, call them. Uh, the matter, is there a um, uh, yeah. motion? Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Smock, a second by Mr. Turner. If you would, please go ahead and vote. All right, we have uh, the results. Uh, motion passes. Five to zero, uh, again with Mr. DeLesley and Mr. Ms. Kiba not present. So that concludes item number three. Um, the next item, item number four, is conservation zoning districts. Is And this is quasi-judicial? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, yes, it's actually... Legislative, because it's an area-wide county issue. Okay, rezone. that's what I thought. So it's not difficult to disclose ex parte communications, hundreds of parcels. Okay, so, so this is legislative. The next two is legislative. Okay, all right, legislative, so we don't have to um, be concerned about ex parte communication. So um, that that means the app, I'm sorry, the staff is presenting this, making this presentation? Okay. All right. If we could please clear the room, if if you could. We're still trying to conduct the the hearing here. So, Miss Lidar, do you want to go ahead and enter item number four into the record, please? Are these together or no? Yeah. If you could, uh, please please take it out of the. Excuse me. Yeah. I was going to say. Item number four, C2310, 
and C2315 through C2320, con Conservation Zoning District Rezone, Manatee County at all, owners. And it's a rezone of more or less 23,104 acres from A, General Agriculture, A1, Agricultural Suburban, RSF1, Residential Single Family, RFS2, Residential Single Family, RSF3, Residential Single Family, RSF4.5, Residential Single Family, RF6, Residential Single Families, RDD4.5, Residential Duplex, and RDD6, Residential Duplex, X Extraction, PD. MH, Plan Development Mobile Home, PDR, Plan Development Residential, and PDRB, Plan Development Recreational Vehicle to the Conservation Zoning District. And the case manager is Mr. Chow Andrews. Good morning. If you would, uh, could you please present your application? Good morning, commissioners. Hi, Charles Andrews, uh, principal planner with Development Services. I have been sworn. Uh, this is a rezoning item, and I've got a presentation here. Uh, so this item here is for, uh, it's a county-initiated rezone. It's going to conservation um, on multiple uh, properties here throughout the county. Uh, this, like I said, it's a zoning atlas map amendment, uh, multiple zoning districts ranging from Euclidean and PD. Uh, and this is kind of a follow-up to what we had presented as a county-initiated comprehensive plan amendment back in March 9th uh, to the Planning Commission. And this is basically a cleanup uh, to follow that so both maps are consistent. There we go. So uh, just a few maps here that I've, I've got our GIS team that made um, of the general areas here that we're looking at. And this is in the, like the, the northwest portion of the county. This is Terracia Preserve. Just a few areas here uh, throughout the county. Emerson Point's on the top there. Um, Tidy Island to the south. Areas that were just historically marked uh, for conservation use, preservation use, they were never updated though on the zoning map. So just a few just random little pieces here. Um, naturally doing every single parcel would be, you know, hundreds of maps, a lot of different things here. And I just wanted to generalize the, uh, the areas here for the commission. Uh, areas out here by the reservoir and whatnot uh, going to conservation. Uh, some state-owned properties here. Out here by Wachula Road and whatnot. Yes, ma'am. Just ask you to, this is on. Oh. To include your presentation that, you know, who are the owners of the property? Sure. It, we're not taking away private development rights. Correct. And I, I, yeah, I will get to that momentarily. But yes, um, these are various property or publicly owned entities ranging from Andy County, uh, from the state of Florida, uh, New College Foundation with that Tidy Island property, uh, DeSoto National Monument. There, there's a few items in here. Um, that we've got that are public entities that we have in the packet there. They were uh, notified of this, just basically identifying them for what they are, and we're not taking any rights from them. We're just acknowledging what they were in existence. Uh, like I said, the rezoning is proposed. It's a follow-up here, the conference, the plan map amendment that the uh, commissioners saw back in March 9th. Uh, it's tentatively scheduled for adoption by the BCC on August 24th of this year. And this is to achieve that class four rating I spoke about back in March through the community rating system uh, and efforts to provide an increase for discounts for flood insurance premiums by 5%. So this would give uh, residents that apply for a flood insurance premium a 30% reduction. Uh, this is something that is sought after by a lot of jurisdictions. So we're in that position to get to a class four, which is, is kind of hard to get to, but we're hoping to, fingers crossed, to get to that. Like I said, the rezoning request, it touches on over 23,000 acres. Properties are owned by multiple public and non-profit entities. Uh, one entity that has a lot of property here is Swift Mud. Uh, use of the properties, like I said, they include environmental preserves, parks, watershed preservation areas uh, out by Lake Manatee Reservoir. Uh, like I said, positive aspects. It'll help us out with that CRS rating to class four. Uh, it'll take in, it'll take residential entitlements out of the 100-year floodplain, the A and AE zones uh, that we'll see flooding here. And it reduces that development potential. But like I said, this is, these are publicly owned properties, so we're not taking anyone's rights or whatnot. We're just acknowledging for what they are, parks and preserves, 
and then the reclassification of the subject properties will more accurately reflect what the zoning map should be. So there is consistency between the future land use map and the zoning map. Uh, there aren't any negative aspects and there aren't any mitigating factors. So in conclusion, it appears to be uh, meet the applicable policies of the comprehensive plan and the land development code. And we would request for transmittal of the zoning atlas map amendment uh, of this request here. And I'm here if you have any questions. Very good. Um, with regard to the ownership of the properties, yes, do, do the entities have to acknowledge this? We did receive uh, acknowledgement and should be in your packet and they are all on board with this. Okay. And the other question, um, are there easements being placed over these properties or is it simply the change in zoning? Uh, there are two things. So some of the property owners, uh, there's uh, the fish profit or the fish nonprofit organization off of Cortez. They have a conservation easement. Some of the folks do. It's not required. It's just what they want to do as their own their own right. Uh, but a lot of these know it's just basically changing a color on a map, so to speak, mm -hmm. to recognize the conservation use. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Roth. Are you saying, in essence, that all of the current property owners will have been notified and there are no objections? Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Concise. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll uh, open it up for public comment. And again, this is not quasi-judicial. It's actually legislative. So there's no need to be sworn. So anybody who wishes to come forward, anyone at all? <laughs> Seeing no one come forward? No, no. Come, come, come ahead. I'm glad you got a sense of humor this morning. That's great. Uh, Mark <laughs> Vandery, uh, Manatee County. Yep, yeah, um, it's on. Uh, well, as I understand it, um, you are going to take a lot of property and rezone it or try to redesignate it as conservation land and i'd just like to say thank you very much <laughs> um i guess you do hear some of what we're saying and charles i know you know i've been back and forth on a lot of this stuff and i'd just like to say again thank you very much um this is a step in the right direction overall and it will go far to improve the general living quality of manatee county maybe you know, restored a little bit to, I don't know how, how long y'all have been around here, but it used to be a really, really nice place. And I'd uh, like to see it get back that way again. Uh, I know we got a lot of people coming in. There's only, only so much you can do. And I know there's a lot of need for housing, uh, a lot of need for workforce housing. I, I appreciate that, and, and, and I am all, all for that. But again, if it's done uh, properly, uh, it'll go a long way our planning is is well thought out and our planners have a chance to actually do their job of planning like we are doing here and again thank you very much um, there is one piece of property I would like to uh, bring to your attention uh, both for this item and then for the subsequent item where you're going to go to um, recreational OS uh, rezoning and that is property ID 56010000. And um, it actually is the property that uh, the water plant owns or it is planning to use. It's 20 acres south of that property rezone on Hillwood that you just approved earlier today. That's the property where the easement is going to put a road to a half acre parcel up to Waterline Road, okay? Now, I know we don't allow uh, rebuttals in the um, quasi-judicial hearings, but uh, I think some of the comments I try to make as honestly as I can, and I think some of my statements were in fact vindicated by your staff, contrary to what the attorney said prior. But this property now, this 20 acres, should be part of this conversion to con, uh, conservation. And the reason why is because now you've got an easement, you've got a road right through that property. Uh, part of that easement is already on conservation property, and now you've cut that off. You've cut it off from the water plant using it with that easement. 
All right. Can't be used anymore. All right. Th thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We'll close public comment and open it up for staff. Any, any uh, closing comments? Good morning again, commissioners. Hi, Charles Andrews, uh, principal planner. Have been sworn or don't need to be sworn. Never mind. Maybe sworn at, but no. Um, so regarding uh, Mr. Vanderee's comment, uh, you'd be looking at it's it's the ordinance is Z twenty three ten, and that parcel is actually not on there because it wouldn't be conservation. It would be um, if, if it was something down the road we wanted to do, it would be like a PDPI because the future land use amendment we did back and presented to you folks uh, back in March, March 9th, it has a PSP1 designation to recognize uh, the water treatment facility plant. So it's actually not a conservation. It's, a, it's more like a common area for that facility. So that's why we didn't change the designation to conservation, if that makes sense. Isn't the intent to utilize that property in the future? It, it would that. be for, for a public use, but we don't, yeah. it, for this application, it was just a straight rezone to con. So if yeah. we want to do something down the road to PDPI for a public interest, it has to be site plan controlled. We have to show that. So if that makes sense. It, it, it's part of a, it's currently part of a PS, uh, PSP1 a, a, future land use yeah. designation, okay. but the zoning is a little different. That, a, that would have to be done through that application. That a separate application for PDPI. Got yes, it. sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll close the public hearing and open it up for consideration or discussion or a motion. Uh, just a statement. I think it's great that we can put 23,104 yeah. acres in conservation. Um, there's always uh, confusion about the designation of properties when they're vacant. So I think this is a very telling uh, action. So I think it's a, a good thing. So with that, anything else? If not, oh, I forgot. I got to pull up my little thing here. So we have a motion by Mr. Turner and a second by Mr. Smock. Uh, if you would, please go ahead and vote. All right. With that, we have the results and motion passes 5-0. All right. Very good. We'll move on to item number five. <laughs> uh, who's clapping out there? Who's clapping? Oh, no. Quick. All right. Item number five, Miss Slider. Item number, can, item number five, C2311 and C2321 R slash OS, Recreational Open Space, Sunning District Rezone, Manatee County, Manatee County at all owners. And it's a rezone of more or less 4,926 acres from conservation. A, general agriculture, A1, agriculture suburban, bill, village, RFS2, RFS3, RFS4.5, and RFS.6, residential single family, RDD6, residential duplex, PRM, professional median office, and MCM, neighborhood commercial median, to the R slash OS, recreational open space, zoning district. Very good. And f for the applicant? Mr. Andrews. Right here, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Hi, Charles Andrews again here, Principal Planner with staff. And I have a quick presentation here. Okay, so this is a county-initiated zoning atlas map amendment or rezone on multiple zoning districts to the Recreation Open Space Zoning District. That's ROS. Uh, a few items here. So once again, this is publicly owned land. Uh, the map that I'm showing you here is the Skyway Bridge Recreation Center owned by the state. Uh, this is added as a parcel uh, in, the, in the, in the well, not to, a couple months back, they had, they were a while, a little while back, they got this added to our parcel layer. So we're able to identify this as a recreation amenity. Gamble Plantation, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And then uh, Manatee State Park as recreation open space as well. Uh, like I said, this, uh, such as the one with the conservation rezone, this recreation open space rezone is being done to address a plan amendment that was brought before the board uh, on March 9th uh, regarding the community rating system and trying to bring our, our county rating from a class five to a class four to get that discount for flood insurance premiums going from 25 to 30%. So it's that 5% increase there for a discount. And on this amendment, it's multi, uh, excuse me, it's multiple properties on 4,900 acres, give or take. Uh, properties are owned by multiple public and nonprofit entities such as Swift Mud, uh, the state, and the county. 
Uh, these are parks and related historic or recreational facilities. So once again, it's just identifying existing uses that are already there. Uh, this has the potential to improve our CRS. And like I said, same thing, uh, bumping that from 25 to 30%. And this would have, uh, this would improve accuracy on our zoning map. So the zoning map and the future land use map can more consistently communicate with each other. Uh, that's always a good thing. Uh, there are no negative aspects and no mitigating factors. This is one of those feel-good planning projects here, happy to be a part of. Uh, the request appears to meet applicable policies of the Comprehensive Plan and Land Development Code, and the request is for a transmittal of the Zoning Atlas Amendment rezone. And I'm here if you have any questions. Very good. Um, one question. We're taking something from conservation to ROR? Or ROS. ROS. Yes, yes sir. What? So... Oh, Speak to ahead. that, please. Yes. Okay, sure. So, because at the time, one item here that um, separate thing that we brought to you folks back in March was a recreation open space zoning district. So at the time, the land development code didn't have anything; they only had conservation. So when that property was changed, I think it's um, the national monument there. Or nope, excuse me. It may have been one of, a lot of properties here, but it was one of those properties that was conservation, but it's more of a uh, recreation active and not a recreational passive use. So to more accurately represent it, now that we have a recreation open space zoning district that was adopted and is in effect right now on the books in the land development code, we felt it prudent to um, change it over to a recreation open space. So this isn't a truly. Uh um, native, like a native habitat or wetland or something like that. It's a different type of... It's a different type of recreational use, but it's still protective. It still takes that development potential out of that property and preserves it. Okay. All right. Mr. Roth. Yes, sir. The percentage of the 5,000 acres is actually private. Is actually, I'm sorry, private? Private, private uh, privately owned? Right. Oh, it's, it's, all, it's all publicly owned or non-profit. Okay. All right, any other questions for staff? Okay, with that, we'll open it up for public comment. Is there anybody who wishes to come forward? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Are you running for office? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how you all do it, really. <laughs> We do it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> for the park park park. Mark Vandery, Manatee County. Um, I guess it's, is this really quasi-judicial or is this legislative? Legislative. Yeah. You want to vote yes? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, this one I have a problem with, y'all. Um, you're taking land that's designated conservation and you're changing it to recreational OS. That's not the same as conservation property. Recreational, I don't know how many dog parks in this county we need. I don't know how many golf courses in this county we need, but that's what you get with the recreational OS. And I would like to see the county have some real open discussion countywide with all of the residents in workshops to take this amount of property and this amount of conservation property, changing it over to ROS, that's a big change. Okay, something like this, I, I think you should you hold off on, on transmitting. I think we need a lot of citizen input on something like this, this is a big deal. Now, a lot of it's good, but where you're taking conservation property and switching it to ROS, some of it is probably acceptable, but there's some of it, for example, up in the uh, Rye Preserve area along the uh, Lower Manatee River downstream from the dam. Why would you change that to recreational OS instead of pure conservation? I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think you should do it. I, really, you need, you need more input from the citizens on this before you go forward. Uh, ultimately, a lot of it's a really good idea and is going the right direction, but there's enough of it that should be questioned. Okay. Now, getting back to that property earlier, I was talking about the 20 acres for the water plant. Right. You, you, 
What Charles said was that, well, they're going to zone that uh, PPS, okay, so that the water plant can use it. Well, you all just cut that off from the water plant. You put an easement, a roadway right through there to that half acre property. The water plant can't get to that 20 acres now. They're cut off, okay? So why don't you go ahead and make that ROS? Might as well do something with it. Otherwise, the developer is going to say, hey, county, we've cut you off from that little 20 acres, you can't use it anymore, so how, how about selling it to us and we'll, we'll put some uh, more houses on it? Well, that's not a good idea either, I don't think. The water plant really needs that property, but and it should be included in one of these uh, rezones here countywide. That's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Very good, thank you. All right, with that, we're going to close public comment and open it up for discussion or... I have a question for staff because they would know a whole lot better than me. So ROS versus conservation. And if we were talking to the citizens, my assumption is that they would have, citizens would have a little more access to that beautiful property. Is that correct? Would there be, what would be the concern from the citizens going from conservation to ROS in your experience? Well, in, in my experience, the land use planner, uh, basically between the con, the rec open space, conservation is more of the uh, passive recreational use, you have your blue ways, you have your low impact, you know, day hiking, that kind of stuff. And then the active recreational, while it's not in the county per se, GT Bray Park, we have active ball fields, and you have lights, and you have um, maybe some parks, for example, like the Manatee State Park, where people are, are, are camping and they have, you know, dumping of, you know, refuge, you know, th those kind of uses in there. So it's a little more impactful, um, but it still doesn't take away the enjoyment and the preservation component of the open space. Right. Okay. So it, it's it's largely the same, just minus the the passive and more of the you're doing more natural preservation on the conservation and more just active enjoyment on the rec open space. Okay. Any other questions for staff? No, I think this is good stuff. I mean, I appreciate the the analysis, and I kind of concur that uh, I like to have some of it as pristine, kind of more uh, rustic, and then more activated because there's a variety of users in the community and the visitors. So I, I think good stuff. Yeah, I view this more of having to do with the current use that the uh, current designation is inconsistent. So I'm, I don't think we're talking about taking land and turning it into a conservation where you'd have to yeah. you know, plant native species, although there, there may be intent at, to do that in the, in the future, but that's not what we're talking about here. So, and, and real thing, real quick here, uh, Commission, if I if I may, just to address uh, some of the questions there regarding the properties. Uh, a number of these properties, you have Rye Preserve. Some of the uses and sometimes the grants, and, and this has been vetted. This has been probably a year in the making. Mm -hmm. That's been vetted with multiple departments, such as uh, uh, Parks and Natural Resources, like with Charlie Hunsaker's group, and looking at sometimes grants get caught up if it's if it's flagged as conservation, but the yeah. use is a little more this. So if you leave it as rec open space, it might allow for those you know, Florida communities trust those kind of things yeah. to get funding. So you don't have to deal with conservation easements, or you don't have to you know that kind of thing. But it's still seeking to preserve uh, these kind of uses. So okay. it, it does the same thing. Okay. okay. We just approved 20, over twenty six thousand acres. Conservation. This is forty, you know, under five thousand. So, seems like a good, good yes, mix. Yes, sir. And, and one final comment. Sorry, is the, the comment about the PDPI, the Plan Development Public Interest. And the reason that you don't see this before you is that if we did a PDPI on all the PSP one designation, uh, future land use designation property, is that would require a site plan. It is a little more involved with that PD process. So right now we're like it doesn't prohibit anything. It just keeps going what it's going at. So. That might be a separate thing down the road. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. With that, I'm going to close a public hearing and open it up for discussion, deliberation, or consideration. Let's move. Hit the button. Like, I don't know. I have a button. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a motion by Mr. Smock and a second by Mr. Turner. If you would, please vote on your magic machine. We are. Uh, do you all have some place to go? <laughs> You're not getting it? No. All right, everybody. Yeah, my, my, I don't have it. All right, so I'm going to call the motion or the, the motion by uh, voice. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Chair votes aye. Motion passes 5 0. Sorry. All right, with that, that can, oh, now we have it. <laughs> so motion passes 5 0.
Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, call the meeting unless there's any other business. Seeing none, thank you very much. Thanks, staff.